Okay, let's get this started. Uh, this is a special council workshop meeting Wednesday, August 1st, 2018 in the Philip T. Glennon Center. Will everybody rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I was going to say Star Spangled Banner. That would be good. I did once. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence if you care to join us. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, item number one. This is a council workshop to discuss the budget. Charlie, you're going to take this over, I guess. Yes, sir. Um, and tell us all about the money. Council, I've, I've given you uh, copies of what's going to be uh, up on the screen, um, but uh, we'll run through, uh, I'll run through each of the departments. So I'll run through the entire general fund, um, and at the end of that, we'll stop and we can go back and discuss any questions you may have uh, on, on any portion of it. Um, so go ahead and jump right in. We'll start with the uh, general fund uh, revenues, uh, your total taxes. Uh, are projected to come in at $5,610,425. That um, is your property tax as well as your, your auto tax. Um, looking at approximately a $508,000 increase on uh, property tax revenues. Um, the uh, auto slash personal property tax has been declining for a couple years, um, but people are just hanging on to their cars longer. Um, so it'll probably continue to go down um, modestly for the next couple of years before it plateaus and then begins to go back uphill again. So uh, no real big concern there. Your license fines and fees uh, are projected at $2,943,000. Um, the, the one trend that we have noticed in there is on our franchise fee with, um, with uh, Duke Energy. It has been going down uh, over, the, over the last couple of years, but then um, this past quarter's check, um, Actually, it was a little more than we projected, So, uh, but the York Electric uh, franchise fees are consistently going up, um, but York Electric serves all, all the new areas, so um, no, no real big concerns uh, from a revenue standpoint there. State shared revenue, um, talking with state officials, they told us to use the same number as we got this year, which is the 172, 128. Um, it could go up, but not likely. Um, your recreation funding at $444,500. Um, one of the biggest reasons for the dip on that is uh, in our current fiscal year, we were actually able to uh, collect uh, two payments from York County uh, because of the way the budget years overlap. Uh, now the way that they are dispersing those funds, we'll only be doing uh, one check. So um, that's the only real difference there. Uh, your other... Uh, revenue items as far as your uh, participation um, fees and things like that, those are still steadily climbing up. And then your other revenue uh, is $835,567. Now that is obviously a tremendous jump from our current year, and that is because of the anticipation of charging for um, uh, trash recycle fees. Um, we do have in the um, uh, fee schedules um, anticipating uh, collecting the full amount at $14.80 per month. Um, that would begin with the first utility bill that, uh, bills that are sent out in October. Um, it'll just be added to uh, as a separate line item on that utility bill. Um, that money will come in uh, to TCUD and then be transferred over into the general fund. Um, so those are your revenues. Uh, you're looking at a total projected budget of $10,500,000, excuse me, $10,5620 $10, uh, in your revenue. That is up from $8.9 million uh, in our current fiscal year. So those are your revenues. Um, just to show you a quick breakdown, um, your taxes are going to make up 56% um, of, your, of your total revenue. Your license fines and fees coming in at 29%. Your other revenue, obviously, as we just, as I just said, um, has jumped up to 8%. That's uh, because that's where the uh, um, trash and recycle fees are coming in. Your recreation revenue at 5%, and then your state shared revenue at 2%. So just kind of illustrating a, um, how, how, how your revenue breakdowns look. So those are your revenues. Um, do you have any questions on, on the revenue portion of general fund? Yeah, one quick one. You, you were talking about all 
use the uh, the mic. Yeah. You're talking about auto and property taxes mm -hmm. have been declining, but I don't know, population goes up, and I know we seem to have a lot of people that license their vehicles in other states. I mean, do we... It just doesn't make sense to me that that would be going down as population increases. I know you said people are holding on to cars longer, but... Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going in and, and doing adjustments with the county. Um, yeah, it, the county will allow for uh, folks to do that and the high mileage and things of that nature uh, and adjust it down. Um, the, I, I have seen where those have adjusted anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks. Um, if you look at your, at your car tax, the bulk of it, the overwhelming majority of it goes to the school district. Mm -hmm. um, and then the what's left is kind of split almost evenly between what the county keeps and what, what distributes back to us. But um, we have asked the county for the information, you know, show us the track record, the trends. They've provided us with all the information and it just, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that it has been doing it over the last two and a half, three years. Um, and it's not monumental decreases, but it, it's enough to where it, it triggered the radar, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, what's yes, the what's the rollout for trash and recycle, and how that's going to go for residents? Um, provided, um, yeah, depending on how this conversation goes tonight, if council is all on board uh, with us uh, doing that, obviously you're not voting tonight. Um, we'll begin that education program uh, process um, uh, the latter part of this month okay. um, through the rewind social media. Uh, utility bill inserts, um, our website, that type thing, channel 115, the whole the whole gamut, uh, and continue to push that out. Uh, may even just uh, push something into the Fort Mill Times as well okay. uh, to make sure folks know uh, well in advance. You're looking at probably a month to a month and a half of us pushing that um, as consistently as we can, um, and then it'll be on the utility bill. Um, and the way that will work is if um, if somebody doesn't make their their utility payment, well, their water's turned off. Obviously, uh, the if they make par partial payments, the first thing that is paid is the uh, garbage and recycle fee. Uh, the next thing that is paid is their um, their sewer fees, and then the last thing that is paid is the water fee. If they're doing a a you know trying to do partial payment type things, so. Uh, generally, we don't have that. Um, folks will come in, um, you know, if they're having issues, you know, financially, whatever. We work with them on payment plans, things like that, um, to where they can continue to have the service and, and continue to make those payments. So um, it's it's not a, a huge issue, uh, not not the way it used to be. Okay. So I think the Fort Mill Times is also a good idea. <coughs> yeah. And this whole conversation started because we had to pay for the police station. We were, we were short $267,000 or something like that to mm -hmm. be able to just qualify for the loan well to, to be able to make, to be able to make that payment without doing the um, without doing tax increases right. we had to come up with that additional revenue so yeah that is where it started that's where the whole thing started that is correct um and as we as we went through the budget uh process and a lot of it came from the conversation with the uh strategic planning workshop that, that we had with uh with you folks um, if we're going to be able to start investing money back into the city uh, in capital projects infrastructure things like that um, we've got to get the revenue somewhere. Um, yeah, and folks, I mean, I guess it's tomato, tomato, but we're, we're not using trash fees to patch potholes. We're freeing up that, that revenue that, that was being consumed um, by that service. So uh, we're just, it, and it is a very, in my opinion, a very fair and equitable way to do it. Uh, it doesn't matter what the appraised value of your home is. Everybody's going to pay the, the, the same rate. Um, whereas you charge, you know, you increase a mill, two mills, three mills on your taxes, um, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, depending on um, the, the type of house, the value of the home, things like that. But you do that this year, three years from now, you know, you've got reassessments. That money just keeps climbing and keeps climbing and keeps climbing, whereas this, we can keep it consistent. And um, my recommendation would be um, we charge whatever we're being charged. So if that rate comes down. Uh, from the provider, uh, whether it's the current one or a new one, I think it's something we look at um, to where we're just freeing up that revenue, um, that tax revenue. Uh, so if we would make up, a, we could go up. We wouldn't make a profit off trash, nope. like, like we do on water, a penny or so Correct. a gallon. Yeah. But on trash, it's just a pass. It's it's a straight pass through. You know, it's just covering our cost. That's correct. Hey Charlie. Yes, ma'am. Is this mic on? Yes, you're good. <laughs> it is now. Yeah, thanks. Um, is the uh, proposed transfer to capital, is that captured within the other in your 
the the proposed tra that that is in that's an expense item. Right. It, so okay. it it'll show later. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so, but that would be, I guess that that portion. Well, I guess then that being said, is that portion considered from the the tax portion that we're receiving? It's gen it's general fund revenue. Okay. Uh, it's not specifically coming from from trash and recycle. It's not specifically okay. coming from taxes, but it it is shown in the non departmental uh, portion of the budget as a quote unquote expense. Um, and basically towards the latter part of the year is generally when we do those type of things uh, in the last quarter. We'll transfer it over into a, a completely separate fund outside of general fund. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Anything else on revenue? All right. Um, moving on into expenses. Um, we'll start with, uh, with municipal council. Um, you've got $31,712 um, uh, for the year on that. Um, biggest reason for the net difference there is no election expense uh, for the coming year, um, provided none of the five of y'all are planning on quitting. Uh, we, we won't have an election expense. So we're thinking that's, about impeachment. <laughs> <laughs> that's your that's your uh, that's your net change um, there on your council. Uh, municipal court at two hundred seventy thousand thirty three dollars. Um, nothing real crazy there. Um, we are looking to um, bring on a, uh, an additional part-time judge to assist with bond hearings, uh, but we don't anticipate having that expense in the 1920 fiscal year as our um, police station is built. We're able to do the bond hearings here versus having to go all the way over to Moss Justice, which we'll have to start doing in September. So, or excuse me, October. Um, development services at $534,910. Um, really, your, your, your only real new thing there, uh, well, I guess let me stop. Um, I jumped to development services. I should be on admin. I'm sorry. Uh, administration, $773,539. Um, not a big change here other than, um, as you're aware, uh, we moved um, uh, Lacey over into our marketing and communication manager position. Um, so you've got a portion of her salary in there. Um, the other portion of her salary is, is over in HTAX. Um, all of our salary and budget um, line items uh, throughout all the departments do envision a, um, a COLA and a uh, merit increase for employees. Uh, COLA this year um, is 2%, and based on their annual reviews, um, employees are eligible for up to a 2% merit, um, you know, based on their, how they perform on their evaluation scores. Uh, so that, that is uh, throughout every department. Um, any questions on admin? Expenses, all right. Your development services, um, the only, uh, your, your total in there is a small uptick. You're at $534,910. Uh, biggest uptick there is comprehensive plan update of $12,000. Um, and that'll, that's uh, the contracted amount with Catawba Cog uh, to, to work through that process. What does that process look like? Like, what do they, what do, they do for $12,000? Oh, you wanna come up? Okay. Join us. Oh. No, no, no. That's that's why we have the open chair. <laughs> there you go. Plug it in. Yeah, I just said what what is entailed in the comp plan update. Like, what do we what does the cog do for us for that? What we do, we hold a series of public meetings where the public is involved, and cog kind of drives those meetings, mm -hmm. and then the actual a lot of the actual work on the document itself is. Is done by then. It's more than our staff can, you know, that we don't have staffing for. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what they do. Any other questions for Tom, our development services or anything there? Uh, I do want to bring up, uh, while we're in that department, I want to talk about fee schedule there. Um, we kept their fees uh, throughout development services, uh, kept those the same with the exception of one. Um, we have eliminated the $350 dock permit fee that was paid to the city um, uh, with envisioning uh, with, with council's approval with the city no longer doing dock permits. Um, it's, it's in, in my opinion, um, redundant and not needed. Uh, we asked you know, for as long as the city has been around basically, have required residents to come in, produce everything that they have to produce to Duke, pay us $350 and then go to Duke, do the exact same thing, pay them $350. At the end of the day, it's Duke's rules. It's Duke's laws. They are, you know, they get to deny it. They get to approve it. Even if we, even if we did approve it, Duke could still deny it. They have ultimate control 
why make residents come through the city to do that when Duke is the jurisdictional agent, um, yeah, agency in charge of that. Um, Probably don't probably won't see a whole lot of new dock construction. A lot of it's more dock maintenance and things like that than it is new docks. But at least at this point, they're just dealing with the regulatory authority. Uh, it saves the resident steps, saves them paperwork, saves them some money. Um, so that's your only change on the uh, development services fees uh, from our current year to next year. Could with I get my three fifty back? <laughs> <laughs> it's not retro. It wouldn't be retroactive. I'm sorry. With the due power submittals, we'll get copies of permits and also we'll. It will have the records in our lot file, so we know if it's a permitted project or not. We mm -hmm. won't just be hands off. Yeah. Right, and if it requires electrical inspections, land disturbance, things like that, they would still have to come through the city. But it's yeah. the actual permit itself, um, as, as we discussed, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to, to hit people twice with that. Yeah, and thank you. I want. I'm looking at the the fee schedule now. Thank you for updating the how the pool and how that description goes. That makes it a little we'll try bit. Try to make it clear. Yeah, it makes yep. it more clear. Thank yeah. you. Good. Thank you. Anything else on development services? All right, thanks, Tom. Um, public works. Back up to that. Uh, where do we go? There we go. Um, your public works budget uh, is projected at $885,557. Um, you've got uh, one new uh, headcount uh, included in there. Uh, that would be a um, second quarter hire, so January hire. Um, we're also in need of, of adding an additional uh, pickup maintenance truck. Uh, we need to replace our uh, mowers. Um, they're so old at this point, we can't even get parts for them, um, as well as a new heater for the public works shop. Those items will not have a fiscal impact on, our, on the 18-19 fiscal year. Uh, they'll be packaged with several other items throughout this. We'll bring a resolution to council probably in November, December timeframe. Um, those payments don't hit until the following fiscal year. Uh, they're, they're always pushed one year out. So you won't have a fiscal impact for 18-19, 19-20. You'll have approximately a $56,000 uh, impact there. Um, and overall, you're looking at about a $256,000 impact uh, for, for those type things uh, that'll be coming. Um, which is very manageable in the in the coming budget in the 1920 budget year. Do we when we retire um, when we retire our fleet vehicles or whatnot? Mm -hmm. What do we do with them? Do we? Uh, the yep. The first thing we do is we'll throw them on like govdeals.com okay. type thing, and they'll sit on there. And Rock Hill does an auction uh, once a year that they allow the surrounding municipalities. We take it down there and drop it off. They handle all the auctioneer fees, things like that, and then they send us a check for what it sold for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so again, uh, those those are your your real changes in your in your uh, public works. But uh, you know, um, biggest thing is is adding the uh, the, the additional headcount uh, to assist with our maintenance. Um, any questions on public works? All right. On law enforcement, um, you're looking at a projected budget of two million seven hundred eighty-two thousand five hundred fifty-nine dollars. Um, that increase is uh, primarily in, in capital outlay for patrol vehicles that were acquired in 17-18. Uh, um, so we, we purchased them um, uh, purchased them this year. They're, they're coming. Uh, those payments are coming due um, starting uh, uh, in the next uh, over those uh, next few fiscal years. We're also looking to replace uh, three other aging vehicles. Again, those won't have a fiscal impact. Um, for um, for eighteen nineteen, um, but will in in nineteen twenty. Um, based on scheduling, we did originally have dispatchers in uh, a portion of dispatcher salary in this. Uh, we removed those um, because the dispatching software probably won't be live for us to be able to use until November timeframe. So we'll be looking to bring those dispatchers on at the beginning of um, the nineteen twenty fiscal year. Um, may try to get them started right at the tail end of this coming fiscal year, um, but any type of budgetary impact at that point will be very, very minimal. Um, so um, I've got Chief Parker here. Any questions on law enforcement budget? Great. Fire services, uh, you're looking at an increased uh, budget there. Um, of about $400,000, you uh, projected at $1,752,222. Uh, biggest things um, that are hitting in there, uh, three mid-year hires um, in April. 
uh, that adds one per shift. That gives us three at, uh, at both firehouses 24-7. Uh, um, obviously, when you hire firefighters, you also have to add turnout gear for them. So um, we've got three sets of turnout gear uh, plus six additional sets. We've got three we need to retire. And then we've got three uh, volunteer firefighters um, that have come on board that um, I think just finished firefighter one just finished firefighter one, so which is fantastic. Uh, they're starting to work towards their firefighter two, which is good. So you've got nine sets of turnout gear in there, and those are about, what, five grand each? Three, so right at $4,000 a, a pop there. Um, the other thing, that, uh, the other big ticket item uh, in, um, in the uh, fire budget is a, um, the uh, sprinkler system for uh, station two um, to uh, um, bring that up to, to code. Um, we've, bud, we've projected that to be about $45,000. Um, we'll be working uh, with our utility staff to make the tap, get the line up to the building, and then letting the contractor come in and, and run the rest of it. So working through that process and getting that started, I would imagine that we'll probably start that sometime in February uh, once tax rolls uh, really start coming in. Um, the other thing we're envisioning uh, potentially uh, would be a uh, new vehicle, SUV-style vehicle. Uh, one, um, if we're able to acquire a, uh, a boat for, um, below the dam, um, which is at this point in time is more needed than one below the dam because of all the, the activity at the uh, Fort Mill River access. Um, we actually had a, um, had a uh, distressed kayaker, what, I think it was last week down there, and we could not help them. Uh, they had to wait for the uh, boat to come off of Constitution Boulevard in uh, Rock Hill. Um, uh, to come up. Fortunately, everybody was okay, but um, that's that seems to be happening more and more and more. So, um, not sure yet on the boat situation. It's part of the um, the uh, impact fee, but um, I know Mayor O'Neill has been having conversations with Gary Simrel, trying to get DNR and Fish and Wildlife money out of the state to to help go towards that. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, but not looking to do the SUV immediately. Um, but whether we do it this year or not, it won't have a fiscal impact, uh, just like the other capital outlay items. But again, your biggest things in fire services are your, your, three, um, your three new staff uh, and the, um, the uh, sprinkler system for station two and then the turnout gear. So any questions on? When are we fire? expecting okay. something from Simmeral? I mean, I ask him every time I see him. But I'm not sure. Um, I, I'll more than happy to can, uh, I mean, keep I can ask him yeah. in September. I um, and it may be worth maybe even talking to um, uh, Senator Clymer um, to see, see if he can he can assist in there as well. Um, but they were all on board with it um, at this point. I'm not sure where that's where that sits. So that boat was budgeted on the on for the for the impact fee. Mm -hmm. So what if they give us the money for it? If they give us the money for it, then because of the way we're looking at doing the impact fees, those funds in fire, they would still have to stay in fire, but could be applied towards um, ladder truck uh, or towards ladder truck, things so like that. Have, yeah. We don't have to give the money back. Correct. That is correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, the conversations that have been had with Representative Gim uh, Simrel in the past is if the state gave us the money, then we would help cover from the dam down to the pump house uh, down on 21. Um, if we buy the boat, yeah, we'd have to work through mutual aid with the county and Rock Hill as far as how far we're going to take our boat that we paid for. Would, um, we, have the staff for that? would, we, have the, would we have the staff for that? Yeah, uh, you've got um, almost 100% of our firefighters uh, are already certified in swift water rescue. Uh, so I anybody that was on, on shift uh, at the time of a call would be able to, to respond. Yes. Oh, well, while David's getting that, how often do we have calls? Hold up, Chief. Let's see. Problem is, right now we have. Hello? Hi. You're good. The problem now is there's a, uh, a swift water rescue team by the county, but since we don't, or by the county, it doesn't, we don't have a boat. They don't perfect. include us in a lot of the calls. We only get dispatched for the actual calls at the dam. And um, then the dam, from the dam to the um, pump house, there's three agencies, us, Fort Mill, and then R Rock Hill, okay? And 
Cimarron was supposed to get us enough money for two boats, one below the dam, which is the least expensive, and then above the dam. And when we had a boat above the dam before, we responded to structure fires on both sides of the lake and us. And that was the deal, but I don't know where that went to. But we probably averaged three calls a month in the summer, maybe more. We had on the river, from the below the dam down. Correct. And what we've been doing is I've got the guys going down and doing drive-throughs now. So when we see these young kids, 12, 14-year-olds with kayaks, and the water's rushing, and we've actually called and shut the parking lot down, had Duke Power come out and shut the gate and had a police officer stand there, and we just shut it down ourselves. Because the last time we had three, two girls and two boys, and the boys fell out and were in the tree right 50 yards down. The girls went all the way to... I forget what park it is down there. Westminster Park. Westminster Park, and man, we are so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Would you so, hand that down to Chief? Uh, here, here's my concern. I I got this PowerPoint slide. The first slide. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> that's the the yeah. the little lines in the river there. That's right off the boundaries of TAK. Uh huh. Okay. So the next slide is a little bit closer up. How much how much room? How much actual area is actually TAK? Shoreline. Yep. And the next one is what they're asking us to be responsible for. Well, we already do how many calls outside of TUK for our fire department? It's, I mean, it seems like two thirds of our calls are outside. I, for $110,000 for a boat and all the other man hours, I, I, like I was telling, mm -hmm. if, if, if Simmerl and that group wants to pay for the boat, then I'm, then I'm probably okay with helping out right. with this. But if we got to foot the whole bill, I'm not for it at all. Well, the big, I would, the big cost for the boat would be above the dam. That's the that's the boat with the pump in it. But all the dam we're looking at a um, like a little inexpensive zodiac or something. We're, we're, in fact, they're going to lend us a zodiac right now. Why do we need a fireboat on top of the dam, on that side of the dam? When we have when we we have a lot of fires. Well, we used to have a lot of fires, but now we don't. But that one fire a year or two fires a year, like when Shin's uh, were you here when Shin's house burnt? Yes, right next to it. Yeah, we had a fireboat there. We had York uh, Charlotte brought their boat down. Uh, New Hope. On, I don't know, Belmont Chief, that's just, down. I mean, for I mean, if they're willing to pay for the boat, it's a good benefit. win. But it, um, I see where you're coming from. Where we, we, I just don't think, as a city, we can't afford to do everybody's stuff. Right. I mean, if they're going to buy the boat, it's worth it. Well, then I'm then I'm yeah. probably okay with it. Yeah. I, I I don't. I, if somebody, if we're going to take the mission, especially downriver stuff, and they're going to buy the boat, I, I probably don't have a problem with that. Downriver, we, we can get away with like, the boat above the dam is a hundred thousand dollars, ninety thousand. Below the dam, we're looking at twenty. Yeah, that's with equipment. With, with equipment the and the training, yes. And we wouldn't need any additional uh, staff? No, because it would be a per call. We have two, two shifts. Well, two how much money do we ask Simmel for? 120 or 115. So to pay for both of them? Mm -hmm. To pay for both of them. Yeah, then, then, then never mind what I say, but if we're paying for it, I'd really, I'd really have to look at the cost. You know, it's just really for how much we use it for. Chief, I mean, how much do we use the police boat for? I mean, I think I talked to you once before. And your mostly big thing is DNR stuff, right? It's do they have a registration? I think DNR should do that. Why do we care if somebody doesn't have a registration on their boat? I mean, we don't get any benefit from it. Some of the kids go out there, he forgot to pay his registration fee, and we're, we're out there and we're out there policing it for the DNR. Yeah, they we, have DNR to do that. As far as calls outside the city mutual aid, um, thank God we don't have as many structure fires as everybody else does. So that's good for us. We probably run twenty percent of our calls outside the city for fire. Um, well, I was told two thirds was outside. No, no. Mm -hmm. I can do the numbers for you, Reed. Yeah, would you? Back. And what we do is we always keep one truck in our city to uh, make sure we're not running the whole yeah. crew. We don't send shows. everybody out. We send mm -hmm. one truck. And we do request to be released as soon as possible. A lot of times we get called out and they, you know, Flint Hill has five departments coming. Fort Mill has four. Um, we're usually a third or fourth. So we're usually canceled by the time, unless it's a full board structure fire. Then, of course, then I want the five departments coming to us. Right. We have that because a minimum standard is 18 people for a structure fire. Two yeah. engines, a ladder truck, service truck, but and an ambulance. Else cover, like, who else would cover that part of the river? Like, who else is, re I mean, what is this? County? Yeah. Yeah. The the county. Do they have a boat? The county has. It's, it's the, not uh, the county. It's There's the a county's. nonprofit. It, it's Dobby a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, Swift Water Rescue Team. And, um, but they're gonna look, if we have a boat, they're gonna look for us to do it. That's yeah. right. And then right. Rock they, Hills got a good, got a, a good job now. I mean, is there is there something wrong with the service that they're the, the level of service they're providing now? I'm not going on, Mike, and saying that. I mean, I, I so think there's, that's a, a, there's your answer. 
<laughs> when it takes them to get to the dam, it takes them an average of 30 to 20 to 30 minutes. Use your mind. For another agency to come to mm -hmm. TK, it takes an average of 20 to 30 minutes. Yep. And if you're in the river and you're going south, you're not going to be here oh, in 20 no. to 30 minutes. I, don't, I mean, I that's don't the bottom line. We need to do all this today. You know, like this is a, a conversation for another day. We're not even budgeting for it I right mean, now. It is, but. Yeah. But I will say 20% of our fire response or fire services are going outside of the city. So if we look at that from a budgetary perspective, $1.7 million going to, towards fire services. So, But you're not sending 000. a third of your equipment, 20%, 50% of your equipment, you're not sending. You're sending one piece of apparatus with two or three guys on it right now. <clears throat> So you're really not, you can't say 20% of the whole budget or 30%. It'd be like five maybe. Because you're sending one piece of apparatus, that 1.7 million, you've got five, six trucks. So you're not sending five or six trucks. We don't send, to our calls, we don't send five or six trucks. We send two. Right. And then we make a decision on which is the second truck. Myself or who's ever in charge says, send me the brush truck. Nope, nope, send me the service truck. Just depends on the call. It says an MVA. Uh, Swift Water mm -hmm. Rescue. We send the service truck down there. So at some point, we uh, whether it's whether it's this coming year or in a future fiscal year, we we will need a we will need a boat for below the dam because of Catawba Park. Um, yeah, that that area um, that that the mayor has outlined, that that section, that 200 feet of shoreline, whatnot. Um, that's where the water's the fastest. Uh, that's where you've got lots of activity, and they're going to be accessing it through our park. Um, yeah, th we need to be able to provide that, that public safety surface um, yeah, for areas inside the city. Any, Do any not Saturday disagree or, at yeah. all about uh, covering all the way down to the pump house. Um, th yeah, th there, there are other agencies and they need to, you know, the county and those other agencies need to determine how important that is to them. Um, do not disagree with that yeah, whatsoever. Money for recreation. Why be <laughs> so on the slides here, I've got a couple of little red lines. That's the TK boundary. You see where the city's kind of in the tan portion there. Mm -hmm. And I also drew a line. I guess it didn't make it to this. Um, right across that little island in the middle of the river there, the TK boundary also comes out there a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we're talking 200, I don't know if it's 200 feet or 200 yards was a scale. Go to the next slide, Tim. Okay, and this is just a close-up view. That little island on the far left, uh, if you just go up straight from the left part of the island straight up is about where the TK boundary was. And so in the next slide, and this is what they're asking us to cover, basically. So we've got that little bitty piece up there, but they're saying, you know, we've got, we want to cover all that. It's just, if they're it, not going to do it. Only if they give us the boat. Well, if they give us a boat, I can, I can see. Right. Look, you're, you're, you've got some skin in the game. I mean, I don't, you guys, I'm not the emperor again. You guys have to say well, so when, too. But. The problem is when you, when you get dispatched to a rescue, I and the person's in the water, they're it. heading down the water. You're not going to stop at Mason's Bend. Right. You're I going after it. that person. I get it. You know, that, and, that, and the same thing they're doing to us. Because what they do is we usually meet in the middle. Rock Hill comes, Rock Hill is probably the major one that comes up. They come up from the other side and scan everything, and we report to them, and they report to us. And we usually find them somewhere in between. In between. Not yeah. all the time, but sometimes they're gone. People get out of their boats and get on land, and they don't happen to tell us and we got six boats going up and down the river well if they're not willing to put some skin in the game I, I think we'll we'll end up getting the boat like Charlie says I just don't think it's gonna be a top priority you know we've got other things we need to spend money on in the next three years or you know after we're, Catawba we're Park is in for a used boat no problem but and the swift water rescue team is gonna uh, we'll know next week they're gonna lend us a boat until we get one a zodiac mm -hmm. so and they're you know they're a nonprofit um, we just got to do the maintenance on it. But if we had a boat, we'd have to do the maintenance on it, too. Right. Another thing, if you want a good eye-opener, take a drive down there on Saturday and Sunday. New Gray Rock Road. Yeah, you about can't drive You can't get through. <laughs> and the people that live on Bluebell, I'm sure Steve can tell you, call after call after call. I listen to the radio, people blocking the driveway, people parking, cacks in the middle of the street, nobody there. It's, it's just phenomenal. And when we open Catawba Park, I, say, I know. Oh, I was my God. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to change that. We have lots parking around that area. Ample. So Ample. How many spaces? Like 600 something spaces, right? What do we say? No, you're close. Is it 676? 676. 676 total parking spaces. 
Ten bucks. And a you head. got a ton of them that are over. But near are, that, the, are they going to like flow in from over the river? You know what I mean? They're, we're going to take up spaces because of that to, to come on to come into the park. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. But so mm -hmm. that's a big chunk right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if we're also hosting a tournament on a Saturday and everybody well, you else got, is trying keep to keep in mind, river, you, you got nobody's going to park over by the ball fields and then carry their kayak or canoe all the way over to the river launch. I mean, that's a, a pretty good haul. I need a paddleboard, <laughs> the cart. And I don't want to prolong this conversation on $20,000 much longer, but I do want to ask, do we have the authority to establish some sort of service district where if we are responsible for providing our fire services through no, this long corridor? No, municipality can't perform, can't establish uh, a uh, tax district like Flint Hill does, Riverview does, right. the other ones. We're a municipality, so we cannot do that. Correct. Mm. Correct. Okay. I looked into it. Okay, thanks. Okay. Anything We're else? Raiden's fire department. Mm. Probably mostly Baxter's also. We'd get there way before they, anybody no, else. No, we're third in Baxter. We're third on Baxter. Third, third on dispatch. Third call. Fort Mill would probably be the first department at Baxter. Fort Mill and Flint Hill would probably the, be the first or one second Braden. in there. Mm -hmm. And the reviews first. Yep. And they're volunteer? Correct. Rear What's their volunteer. response time about? Uh, That's what I mean. Yeah, we, they'll call us. Right. But it takes us the driving time. So it seems like we're getting there at the same time, but we're not because our driving time's longer, their driving time's half. Yeah. That's what, that's the balancing act. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Next. Thank you. All right, Parks and Recreation. Uh, you're looking at projected expenses of $663,518. Um, it does anticipate uh, one new hire uh, for park maintenance. Um, that would be a second quarter hire coming on in January. Um, takes that <laughs> park maintenance up to a whopping three, but it, that makes a huge difference. Uh, it's definitely moving in the right direction. Um, budget also reflects um, an increase in your park maintenance of about $15,000 and an increase in our contract grounds maintenance, that's the turf maintenance on the ball fields, uh, of about $12,000 to cover some, some of the items that we've, we've had to hold off on over the last couple of years. Um, so that is your, your parks and rec budget. Um, any questions uh, that we can answer for you on that? What, if, as a resident, what would I see for that additional, like, would you say $15,000? Park so maintenance. There's two, yeah. So what different will they see than what they see now? So oftentimes we hear about, you know, bathrooms aren't, you know, cleaned enough or things like that. So now will we, you know, adding an, an additional FTE, um, mm -hmm. you know, funding more? Well, I, I think I think a couple of things. That obviously, staff uh, the additional staff maintenance is going to help with some of the restroom stuff. Um, there's several projects that um, uh, smaller projects that we've obviously had to uh, put off um, this previous uh, uh, fiscal year. One one of which is replacing uh, the board the dock boards at Pit Cairn that we're looking mm -hmm. into doing there and adding some additional TLC to uh, Pit Cairn Park as well. Um, so it gives us a little more flexibility to tackle some of those projects we've had to we've had to hold off on. A lot of it's just your an, an increase in your in your operating maintenance, um, your landscaping, your aesthetics around your parks is what is where you're going to see the biggest impact, most certainly. Yep. Like sand. Like sand. And a yeah, sandbox, sand in a sandbox. I can promise you, uh, sand <laughs> at Beach Club for yes. this upcoming budget here, <laughs> and the and the beach volleyball court. There you go. <laughs> Thank Anything you. else on Parks and Rec? Uh, we talked maybe last year about funding an, a person for, or maybe part-time for Windjammer, the problem we have down there with people coming in. Uh, open the door on that one. Never mind. It was, I mean, it was a conversation, but I think, I, I really think things have been going very how, well. How are we doing the complaints this year? They, they've, few and far between. I know uh, patrol has been down there a lot. Um, the word has gotten out. Um, they hit it hard um, in May with tickets and things like that for the folks that didn't have the decals. Word got out really quick. Um, I know Joey has had his staff down there every day, um, you know, cleaning and, and things like that. I haven't gotten any at this point. Great. So, um, What's working it, it, Right now it seems, it seems to be working, knock on wood. So, uh, but that, uh, it's obviously, it's a, it's a good joint effort between law enforcement and our, and our park staff um, in tackling that issue without having to add that additional headcount. They'll continue to monitor it. So on a busy weekend, 
what's the cleaning schedule? Is it every day or is it twice a day? Or? We That was part of the adjustment from uh, this previous year to this year is uh, we have maintenance out there every day. Even on non-rental days, we'll, uh, we'll still have maintenance staff out there. Mm-hmm. We've uh, also had uh, great assistance from some residents that live on Windjammer that have helped clean the park, and they've assisted us on – um, hey, there's an item there you may want to check out. So um, definitely some of the citizens getting involved um, mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. well, helping, helping with that uh, joint effort. Can we recognize those folks at something coming up? I feel like that would mm-hmm. – we We've got, recognize we've got a sign. them at the park. Yeah, we, we've got a sign we provide a sign for mm-hmm. them, yeah. It's and we've had thing. we've had other folks at various parks do an adoptive park thing. Mm-hmm. We've got a sign up for them, things like that. But yeah, um, yeah, I thought it was fantastic when Joey was able to get those folks to involved. So as pretty well. much from Memorial Day until Labor Day, our our maintenance staff hit it seven days a week. Mm-hmm. So are they parking on the street now up on Windjammer? Are you getting any complaints about upstream parking versus? That would be chief and. He, no. No parking problems no. either? Oh, God, um, everything's the, wonderful. When, the, the times that I've gone down there, I haven't noticed a whole, uh, an increased amount of, of vehicles just lining TKK Drive, but, um, except for on Friday nights during the ski show, but that's oh, by yeah. design. Yep. Um, I think they've done a good job with that. So Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yes, sir. Anything else on Parks and Rec? Cool. Right. Thanks, you. Um, your non-departmental expenses. Um, Come to a total of two million three hundred um, three hundred eleven thousand five seventy three. Um, what number do you have? Uh, two million three eleven five seventy three. Oh, I'm sorry. If you if you're looking at your slides, you got you got your transfer to your capital projects okay. added to your non departmental. It will give you that that total number. I'm sorry. I was looking at the at the packet instead of the screen there. Um, so yeah, your your expenses um, are two million one twenty one five seventy three. Uh, in true expenses, you, your biggest thing there is we did include the uh, the bond uh, bond payment for the new police station for approximately one hundred twenty one thousand um, dollars. Slight uptick uh, increase in the trash and recycle expenses, and that's just due to new homes coming online through the year. Um, it does also reflect a sixty four thousand um, dollar just operational contingency. Uh, if those funds aren't needed, aren't used, as well as any cost savings or additional revenues, uh, unprojected revenues that may come in, uh, that money is just transferred over into fund balance uh, at the conclusion of the fiscal year. And new uh, this year, we have a capital projects fund of $190,000 to transfer over to there. Um, council can um, either elect at any point during the fiscal year to spend that money on a, on a, uh, on a project. Um, yeah. Replacing the bathrooms at Rundy, putting a sidewalk down um, windward, um, and, or yeah. other things. Um, Did you say po- sidewalk on windward? Yeah, uh, from the fire station down to down oh, to Rundy. Wind, uh, windward. Oh, windjammer. No, 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 not windjammer. Gotcha. Windward from the fire station with a crosswalk. I don't want to do that windjammer conversation again. No, we'll not do the windjammer. Not again. No, sir. So. Um, or that money sits in the capital reserve uh, line item and we just continue to add to it and build to it. Um, that will be the same, um, or that capital projects fund will be the same fund where the impact fees go. Uh, and we'll differentiate between what's impact fees and what's transfer out of general fund. Uh, now that I got my cognitive process. skills back, what's the, what's with the wind, windward sidewalk? What's the um, so you've got a sidewalk that comes from Anchorage to Rundy Park. Uh, if you're coming up TKK Drive on the sidewalk and you get on the crosswalk, it oh, goes to it nowhere. There. So going from there, I got you. coming back down towards the park. Okay, I got mm-hmm. you. I see you. It, is it on the fire station yeah. side? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, so ba- basically if you were on the trail and you were yeah. trying to get to the park, yeah. you have to go on the road. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it's I got just, it. Yeah, yeah I get so. it. Yeah. So, but guy. again, we we as staff are not recommending at this point an allocation of those funds other than to transfer in. But as we go through the course of the fiscal year, uh, if um, there is a, a need that the um, council wants to address uh, from a capital project standpoint, um, there's it would be at least one hundred ninety thousand uh, dollars for for that. So. <laughs> Um, so, um, at the end of the day, you've got a ten million uh, five hundred uh, ten million five thousand six hundred twenty-one uh, or twenty-dollar budget. Uh, it is a balanced budget, um, and you can see kind of you break down your percentage of your departments. Um, obviously, as is the case with any um, any municipality, uh, your public safety is going to take up your, your your biggest chunk there. So you're looking at um, almost almost forty percent. 
uh, there. Um, your public works and parks and rec um, at nine and seven percent. Non-departmental, obviously that one's gonna be a huge jump. That's where all your bond payments are and things like that. Um, your trash and recycle fees or expenses. Um, administration at 8%, development services at 5%, um, and council is just killing the budget with less than 1% there. So um, those are, that is your general fund budget on, um, on revenues and expenses. Uh, we've talked through the, um, uh, the, there's one other fee schedule I want to bring to your attention, um, one other change. The, uh, uh, and it's gonna be on tree permits. Um, what, yes, it's under the operations fee schedule. What we have done in the past on the operations fee schedule with um, the tree permit is if it's, um, if it's a live tree, it's $20 for the permit. If it's a dead tree, it was nothing. I think we need to charge um, 20 bucks regardless or don't charge anything. It costs the same amount. It's same amount of staff time whether the tree's dead or alive to process the permit, go out, mark the tree, the whole bit. Um, we had a council member um, many, many years ago that said, I'm not paying for a permit to take down a dead tree on my property. So it went from $20 to $0. I'm completely fine either way. We either need to you know, still do the permit process but not charge for it, or we need to charge for both. It does not make any logical sense to charge for, live, uh, for a permit to remove five live trees and nothing to remove five dead trees. It requires so the same amount of This is residents? Hmm? This is, yeah, so this, a, a this developer is, comes in and wants to remove trees. Oh, that's part of a whole land disturbance, and okay, they're, they're, those cool. are much bigger fees. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're not changing that. Mm -mm. No, sir. <clears throat> I guess what, what type of impact would I have in the budget? Minimal. The, you're talking about nominal dollars. I mean, if these, if these were big significant dollars, it would have its own line item uh, and, and other revenue type thing. We, we get more permit applications for dead trees than we do live. Uh, so you, you might see a few hundred dollars come in there. Um, Chad Holland does our, our uh, tree permits. Yeah, he gets the application, goes out and expects it. Yep, that's a live tree. You owe twenty dollars. Go to City Hall, and we'll sign off on your permit. You can take, but it's one permit, and it doesn't matter how many trees. It's one permit. It's twenty bucks, whether you're taking down one tree or ten trees. You know, so he still got to go out. He still got to process the permit. Um, my recommendation w would be it's it's a twenty dollar permit. You move on. Uh, if council is um, is not on board with that. I would say we just keep the permit process in place. That helps us make sure that the, the tree folks have you know, proper business license and things like that. Um, but uh, you either charge 20 bucks for it or you charge nothing for it. Um, we're fine either way. So just kind of need a Whatever little Whatever Gus decides. I'm going to take a tree down. It's dead, so it's free. <laughs> <laughs> you better do it more. You better do yeah, it before we pass this budget. Get on it before <laughs> October. <laughs> yes, sir. I mean, is. How many, how many of these permits do we see? Is it really going to change behavior? The only thing I would not want to happen is, you know, we don't charge anything for people taking down real trees. And it's not going to change behavior. Yeah. I mean, you still got to go through the permit okay. process. Yeah. yeah. Well, Most people charge. want the trees on, on their property. I think if we didn't yes, charge anything, it would, it would be more people would want to go get the, do it the right thing versus yeah. trying to save 20 bucks. I think yeah. I always thought it was $20 per tree. I mean, mm -hmm. I see. Okay. $20 per permit, not per tree. What do you want to do, Gus? Make it for tree. <laughs> Your decision. <laughs> Dump it on me. <laughs> you're the new guy. I think charge. I, I mean, if you're saying go, either charge for both twenty dollars. But you're and you want to go per tree. No, I want to go do away with it. But I'm gonna let you decide. I just do away with it as long as we go through the process. And we're not. I voting, mean, you still so. got to get a permit. You still got to get it's, a permit. It's not revenue for the city. I mean, how it's many not permits revenue. do we get? It's less given. Uh, we we get a, a we get a large number of tree permits. We get a lot of tree permits. Most of them are dead. dead trees, but we we still get a fair number of live tree permits. Um, but I would say you probably get 150, 200 tree permits a year. Well, I mean, there's there's chop there, down the tree and don't get the permit. Then you get a fine. Then you get fined. How much is the fine? $20. That's <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> We double the permit fee, 40 bucks. I mean, we're talking about $4,000 here. You said, you said 200 permits mm -hmm. a year times $20. But it's not going to be $4,000 because most of those trees are dead and we're not charging for them. Well, yeah. Right. So 
So again, if sixty per seventy percent are not are dead. So we're not getting twenty dollars off off those. So so we're really only getting twenty times whatever the thirty percent number was. Mm -hmm. Was we're talking. This it, it is well, trivial, but it's it's a fee and staff. What's thirty percent of four thousand? So is that what it's, you, it's up is that what to you, you guys. Said 4, <laughs> you just gave the number of four thousand. Yeah, What's thirty percent of four thousand? Seven hundred dollars. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have Bob Ark in here. He could tell you make exactly it go what away. Is. Make it go away. <laughs> I do recommend. I mean, obviously, that we keep the the permit process. The in permit place, process will stay in place. We're Tree City, right? Are we still Tree City? Or are we yes, Bird we Sanctuary? Are. Not where I'm Deer sanctuary. Deer sanctuary. Yeah. <laughs> don't start that one, huh? I like that. So, what did you decide, Gus? Keep the process in place. Make the fee go away. There you go. Everybody good with that? And when we come back to you with okay. uh, first read, uh, we'll, we'll pull that off the perm off Great. the uh, fee schedule. Anything else on? Thanks, um, guys. So um, we kind of recapped a lot of this or went through this as we as we went through um, uh, through the rest of your um, your slide packet there. Um, again, there's your some of your highlights of the budget. Um, you're looking at uh, almost a million dollars, a little over a million dollars in new revenues uh, for the coming year. Uh, with the bulk of that coming in tax revenue and then the trash collection fees. Um, again, charging the $1,480 uh, per month per house um, on the trash uh, collection fee. Um, we do are showing no revenue coming in for the boat storage lot. Um, most folks have already moved out. Um, so uh, we gave them until the end of September to get that done, and most of the, the vast majority of them have already um, handled that. So, and really didn't hear any, any negative comments from it. They completely understood, said, hey, great, appreciate it. So uh, your tree permits, we just discussed, dead or alive, and we're getting rid of it. So um, we discussed the eliminating of the uh, dock permit process uh, and fee there. Um, there's your three new hires in fire department. Uh, it's one worker per shift at the end of uh, second quarter. One new park maintenance, one new public works, uh, higher at the end of quarter one. Uh, 64,000 operational contingency. Just as a reminder, here's your capital items we'll be bringing to you in a resolution. We'll package all these together uh, in one resolution uh, later this fall. Public works with maintenance truck, mowers and heater. Uh, three new patrol cars to replace the older vehicles. Um, the fire department, the, um, the only portion of this that would be a, um, a really a capital item uh, is the, uh, the SUV for carrying gear, supplies, potentially the boat, uh, or a boat of some type maybe. Um, and then um, the turnout gear and the fire sprinkler, your parks and rec. Um, just to alert council, we are, uh, Joey actually completed the, uh, the part applications uh, today um, to get those sent out. We're applying for uh, PARD funds to begin the process, hopefully, of converting Trailhead Park into an all-inclusive playground. Uh, so uh, looking forward to, to getting that process started. And then, as we discussed, $190,000 transferred to the new Capital Projects Fund. And that is your general fund. Um, any, any questions or further discussion on general fund? I saw five new hires this year. That is correct. Yes, sir. And then the uh, uh, in general fund, yes, sir. The all inclusive park is that the ones we were yes, meeting on. Mm -hmm. So our portion is what? Well, what? right now we're we're just applying for the for the PARD funds. So you have three years in which to spend those funds uh, once once you're awarded. Are we? Um, so, and you're not required to spend them. I mean, because it's a reimbursement. So if you don't spend the money, are we required, then. Are we required to do any kind of match with the PARD? Grant. Yeah, it's a 20% match. We've got that included in the budget. Okay. But what you, the way that works is you have to spend 100%, and then they, they reimburse you 80%. So if we don't spend the 100%, you know, if um, this all play together group, for whatever reason, decides they, they don't want to work with us, then council can elect to go it alone and, and tackle that project. Or uh, those PARD funds, uh, we, request to, uh, we request a different project. Yeah. I don't think they're ready to make any decision right now. Well, that's fine. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. I, I just talked didn't fight. Today. Okay, so they're not there yet. Okay. And then we used to put on the budgets years ago all the cell phones. They're still in there. Well, I know they are, but we used to have a line number. I mean, are we, what are we, how many, are we, are we, are we going to be talking about that coming up or is that, no? No, we used to I mean, we, we can't talk stuff. about it. Yeah, I mean, 
you've got, I mean, obviously you still got, we still have uh, city issued cell phones um, for the same, the same folks that we've always had. Um, we have actually just, um, we, we had switched over to Sprint for a while and the service coverage was horrible. And um, we did it as a cost saving measure. So next week we're actually switching back to Verizon, um, but we're able to get on a, basically it's $39 a month per line. And how many um, lines have we, have we got now? Um, how many cell phones are now? Tim, 77. 77. And that includes our law enforcement, uh, all of our police officers, your maintenance folks, um, and um, a few how other How many people folks. work for the city now? Uh, you're, with these five, you'll be at about 106. 105, 106, yes. 70% of the people have cell phones. Mm -hmm. Do we have a bring your own device program or anything no. like that? Mm -mm. Have we considered that? Mm -mm. Not in the past. I mean, it's it's unlimited data, unlimited minutes, um, you know, for $39 a month, plus it puts you on priority bandwidth uh, in the event of an emergency. Um, you know, a weather disaster, that kind of thing, where people are, are an active shooter event and things like that. Um, it basically kicks everybody else off the off the uh, bandwidth um, and would give us the priority on those bandwidths. So. <laughs> Don't put it too close to your mouth. Go ahead. You look like you're getting ready hey, to say quick question. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Just a quick question, just talking about the mm -hmm. trash fees. Yes. Um, and I would mentioned it briefly before, but with the implementation or possible implementation of impact fees coming on board um, where we're able to purchase vehicles that are in excess of a hundred thousand dollars right instead of if we think progressively instead of passing this fourteen dollars and fifty cents per through to you know the, the the vendor that we currently use is there any scenario where hey this contract's good for another four years let's start planning we'll have the funds to purchase our own equipment into now that same $15 per customer is because he's obviously operating on making his margins. Mm -hmm. And so, and you're in the trash. Yeah. Business. So that 800,000, yeah. I'm not talking about me, yeah. <laughs> that $800,000 a year in revenue though. Now in theory, 30% of that's profit. So that's an extra 200 and change in profit. To cover things like that under it impact is, which fee, it would take we would have to wait uh, until you do a five-year update, and you'd have to update the study to include those, um, unless we y'all want to pause where we're at on no, impact fees now. No, I'm not trying now, to do any of that. I'm right. just okay. asking, just um, I mean, we, we can start putting together those numbers. Um, I mean, he operates with three trucks, <clears> and you get a check for the recycling side of things. That's an additional who, revenue. Who, no. Oh, uh, yeah. To be um, There's no money recycling anymore. So, Unfortunately, the, the biggest thing that would that um, I think would make it very difficult for us is maintaining those trucks and having a facility. We don't have a facility large enough uh, to be able to bring those you know those size vehicles in to do the the maintenance repairs and things like that. That would be an, another additional expense. Um, he's running three automator trucks and two or three uh, rear loader trucks on some of the. Um, uh, the the back at the traditional side of TKK on those narrow streets, you're you're talking about a lot of expense, uh, both staff, you know, salaries, benefits, the maintenance wear and tear on the vehicles. We can definitely put yeah you know, put that scenario together and just show you, hey, here's here's what your here's what your startup costs are going to look like, and then here's what your annual projected costs are going to look like. Um, obviously, driving back and forth to the uh, York County landfill, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's a trip. I mean, uh, granted, that's something that they're doing now. Um, the recycle side of things, I don't even begin to know where we would, what we would do with the with the recycles. I mean, it, even with the issues he's he's having now, um, and he's got personal relationships with the Sunoco folks um, that are that are helping him. I don't. Uh, yeah. It, uh, uh no so it, it it would be a very difficult pill to tackle not saying that it couldn't be done um i don't know that we could do it at the 1480 per house per month uh even if impact fees paid for the for the uh for the trucks but right. we can yeah. absolutely start looking Good at those question. looking at those scenarios and try to put some always looking together. for revenue yeah. Yeah. Always looking absolutely for revenue. hey uh, when's that contract up 2024 i think wow yeah. and is he um he has to maintain that level of service and that and that cost or is he the, we're adjusted for petroleum or he can he there there are built-in things that that will allow for it uh when he first became our contractor he was at 1492 
Uh, so he's actually 12 cents less than what he was when he started at the 1480 rate. So potentially, potentially. So what but, did he go up for, gas cost and Gas labor? costs, in, increased tipping fees um, being charged either at the recycle center or at the... Um, at tipping the, fees uh, or dumping? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Your tipping fees at the county landfill, if those increase by a certain percentage, he can pass, um, he can pass that through to us. Um, yeah, he's already um, basically eating the increases he's been having at the recycle center um, so due to the contamination that they're having to deal with. So, um, and that that's a whole different subject uh, for a different time. Um, here so, pretty soon. Um, Council, I have a something that I'd like us to consider doing this year, um, if possible. Um, so we have a, a fund balance requirement of, is 25%? 25%. 25 yes, ma'am. I believe right now, currently, we have about 35%. Uh, no, there. I would say you're probably 28, 29%. Okay, 28, mm -hmm. okay, 29%. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would like to recommend that we consider doing in the future is once we close out, once the city closes out their fiscal year, um, going ahead and funding or, or refunding our fund balance reserves back to whatever level it is that we want, whether it's that 25% or a little bit above that. Um, and then anything additional after that goes into our capital reserve fund. And what that does is it helps build that capital reserve fund up so that when there are large um, investment purchases, things like that that we have, we're, we're continually investing in that. And it's not just gonna be flat every year 190 because you're gonna do that operating transfer or the, you know, your, your general fund transfer plus right. any sort of. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, just keep in mind your 25%, and I, I don't disagree with that. I think, I think it's a good idea if that's what council wants to do, but keep in mind that 25% is gonna keep going up because it's 25% of whatever your, your annual operating cost mm -hmm. is. So as the budget grows, the 25% has to move up. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're not talking, I mean, you probably end up with anywhere between 60 and $100,000 uh, additional every year that's seen that is to, the, to the positive where we end up being, so. Mm -hmm. And that's self-imposed 25%. We don't, that's no legislative requirement. Yeah, no, Do we pass that you, ordinance? As yeah, y'all passed it. When we voted ordinance. on that, yep. it was an ordinance? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But, but it's, it's, it's only a city legislative order. There's, right. no, yeah. there's no fiscal control on right. it. Now, it, 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 it is what um, your, your auditors, um, your, your credit agencies, you know, Moody's, things like that, they want to see that fund balance um, up um, to keep that, um, that um, bond rating uh, where it's at. Is 25%? sufficient yeah 25% right? is recommended uh, more the more the merrier more yeah but they they really want that that 25% okay. um, you've got some cities that have been able to build up you know 50% uh, and then leave it there yeah, it's great um, yeah, yeah. having a savings account is important mm -hmm. like you have to have that back you know that that fail safe but at the same time continuing to just throw money into it mm -hmm. doesn't make sense when we have capital projects that need investment no doubt um, no so, doubt so I, I would agree yeah and not to mention that if there were an emergency where we had to tap into our reserve funds we would still have that capital correct um, funding available that, that you could pull, could pull you absolutely right? could but Most i think certainly. that i think that starting to think about our future and think about these large investments that we're going to have as our infrastructure continues to age and our population mm -hmm. continues to grow i think we need to come up with a, another strategy in addition to you know, just a, a, a flat contribution from the general mm -hmm. fund, which is great um, from the from the get go, but also any sort of you know year end savings. If that's if that's something council wants to do, we could bring it uh, to council you know mid budget year um, as a as a resolution um, uh, to begin with. Um, is there council's a on board with that? Incorporate it into the ordinance. You could if that's what council wants. To, uh, we could do it either way, either through a um, uh, amendment to the uh, to the uh, amendment code. Uh, we could put it into the budget ordinance itself. Um, if you want this to be an ongoing policy versus just for this year, you know, for this coming year, I would I would suggest you either adopt it by resolution as a policy, or you amend um, the the financial portion of the code uh, and put it in there. Um, otherwise, at the conclusion of this fiscal year, that doesn't necessarily mean that that happens the following year. So. Um, that that would be my recommendation. We could we could tackle it either way. If you want it in the budget ordinance, um, we can we can put that paragraph in there. Um, if you would rather it be an ongoing thing, 
we'll bring you a resolution or a budget amendment um, you know, mid, mid uh, fiscal year next year uh, for council to consider. We can go either way. So, do you guys have a? I was about to say, which way do you want to go? So I can write to much it. it. I mean, I, I see the benefits of it, but I just want to think about it. Yeah. Okay. That's it's pros and cons on it, but yeah, I'd like to try to maintain, you know, our savings balance as much as mm -hmm. possible. I don't get the, the thing, but if you want to borrow three million dollars, you got to have three million dollars in your savings account or something. I never understood that thing. I'd, you know, whenever we borrow money, whenever we borrow money, we can only borrow money if we have so much money in our savings account. It seems like. I know that, that <clears throat> no, we can we can borrow as much money as you want I, I know, to, but, I know, but um, to get the, they want us. They the Moody's looks at we have to send them our audit every year, uh, and if we've got a a significant decline in our in our reserve funds, um, then they're going to want to know why. And I was, was talking about one time. Thing, we were right? talking last time with Bob was here, and, and we were talking about how we're going to fund that extra money for the police department. I said, well, we got two and a half million dollars. What do we had in the bank? Oh, Bob was like, you know, how Bob gets when we spend. <laughs> he don't want to spend savings. the savings. Oh, no, 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 no. He, we uh, don't want to use our own money. Time. We need to borrow money, you know, type thing. I said, okay, Bob, I didn't want to get him all riled up. <laughs> That's the point I was making. We can't we can't use our own funds. We have to borrow money when, when to not the touch it. Agencies take a look at our books. Don't mm -hmm. they see favorably when you take um, when they see you investing in large yes. capital? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. They absolutely so, do. And we're, with the impact fees too, we're going to hopefully pay a large percentage of those bond payments down. I wouldn't say a large percentage, but it's it, yeah, it's it's going to help on your on your fire department bond. It will help uh, to a certain extent on your uh, police department bond. Um, hopefully but pay for those, those would be those would be the only two uh, existing or soon to be existing bonds uh, that it would help on a debt set off. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else on general fund? Um, for uh, what what Alicia just brought up, we'll just do the budget ordinance the, as is uh, the way we've done it in the past. And at, at your first read, if everybody's decided that. Hey, let's put it in this instead of doing it as a code amendment. You can just make that as part of your motion um, to also include, and then we can add it prior to second read. Uh, and that, yeah, as long as it's part of the motion, it'll be fine. That'll give you at least till August 20th to decide which way you want to go with it. All right, TCUD, uh, our utility budget. You got total revenues of $4,836,204. Your expenditures are four million seven eighty five six oh six, with an operational contingency of fifty thousand five ninety eight, bringing you to a balanced budget. So, um, let me get to my T code here. So tap fees, right? What? Tap. Mm -hmm. Tap fees went up. Um, no, tap fees have not gone. Uh, your capacity charges have gone up. Oh. So, Charlie, how often do we use our contingencies? Uh, in general fund, um, we use we use our reserve funds. Are you talking about the operational contingency or our reserve fund? Our operational contingency. Um, I would say we probably use a little bit every year, just depending on. Yeah, I mean, there's there's times where, um, yeah, for instance, um, your um, the forty thousand dollars to do the impact fee study. Yeah, things come up during the middle of the year where okay. Council, is this something you want to take on? It wasn't something that was budgeted for. We do have the, the ability to do it. Do you want to do that? Well, the first thing we, we, we pull that from is, is out of that operational contingency, so to speak, uh, instead of pulling from reserve funds. Now, the reserve funds uh, with general fund, uh, we, we dip into that every year um, from October until January. <laughs> and then when as the, as the tax money start coming in, that's replenished, um, but it's used as operational money uh, for the first quarter, uh, first quarter and a half. So, um, but your operational contingencies, I mean, it's not something we go into trying to use. Um, yeah, and very, it's not it's not very uh, often. I would say. I mean, it's not a every year. Absolutely, we're we're depleting that operational contingency. I would say. 99% of the time, your operational contingency and additional revenues that are that are realized and um, over over expenditures where we've been able to save, um, they end up in your reserve fund. I mean, we'll start off with 150,000 at the end of the uh, for an operational contingency, and at the end of the year, it's 200, 250, you know, because of revenues and expenses. So, mm -hmm. on your on your T cud, um, your um, your your biggest change is here. 
Obviously, you've got um, significant um, tap fees uh, coming in. Um, that has increased from $225,000 to $362,000. Um, and that's not an increase in those tap fees. There is an increase in the capacity charges, um, which you should have on your fee schedule. Um, your water revenue, sewer revenue, obviously uh, come mid fiscal year, we're coming to you with a budget amendment for TCUD uh, to adjust the, uh, the rates because of a pass through from Rock Hill. Um, they are projected to continue to increase rates through 2021. Um, they, to fund their um, capacity uh, increases that they're doing. So, um, and they're not significant increases, but it, it'll, it'll add a few, few cents <coughs> every year. Uh, but we don't pass those through until we're actually realizing it. So we're not, we're not showing any um, volumetric usage fee increases, um, you know, to start the fiscal year. Will tap fees change with the impact fee? Mm -mm. So, so. Those two separate things. Um, it, it, we can jump to the fee schedule. That's okay. Um, but yeah, for uh, the tap fees are paid by the builders. Uh, so for a regular domestic tap, it's going to cost them. Uh, this year it cost them fifteen hundred. Next year seventeen fifty. They'll also have to pay the impact fees as well. Um, on the sewer line, it's fifteen hundred fifteen hundred bucks to tap that. So you're um, you're a little over three thousand dollars. Um, on your um, when the builder comes in to pay for their, their application. So um, going back into TCUD, looking at looking at how your uh, your funds are allocated, you've got approximately 50% of all the funds that are collected are put back into the system through uh, through O and M. You've got 19% going to debt service and 5% going to lease payments. 25% of it is your personnel cost. Um, this budget does envision uh, one new hire um, in the, um, the uh, TCA department. Um, we're still one head count short, two. Why don't you just hire the one? Did you just hire one? So you got two. There you go. So, any event, this envisions bringing on a new hire, but obviously first we want to get up to full heck and <laughs> replace our, our open positions. Um, know anybody that wants, wants a job, we're hiring. Um, it also includes, uh, one of the big things that I, I, want to, I want to bring to council's attention. Do I get a cell and, phone with that job? Um, <laughs> yes, you do. Um, that's how we're able to communicate with our folks in the field. Um, one big thing I want to point out in this is uh, $50,000 to go towards a rate study. Um, one of the biggest things we want to get out of the rate study is um, showing us where we need to be to move TCUD2 from a flat monthly rate on sewer to a volumetric rate. Um, they'll, that's not the only thing they'll be looking at for $50,000, obviously, but they'll be analyzing all of our rates. We haven't done a rate study in 15 plus years. I mean, it's been a while. Um, looking at where, where our rates are, where they need to be, um, some may need, you know, they may recommend some need to go up, some need to come down, you know, that type of thing. Doesn't mean you have to do any of it, but at least you've got, um, you've got an expert that has provided you with a report to, to help, um, help with that. Um, you know, they'll be going through our, our, uh, bond covenants as far as, you know, making sure that, um, we're going to still hit that 2.1 to 1 ratio that we're required. Uh, required to have so I'm excited to get that um, get that process study uh, that that process started um, uh, so we can start making um, positive strides there with those with those rates I know that's been a big uh, point of contention with our TCA two customers um, even before we we purchased the system um, no other real significant increases uh, water tower will get painted uh, this coming spring uh, the water tower here at the clubhouse um, Unless council has any objections or issues, we're going to paint it look like a golf ball on a golf tee. So it doesn't cost any extra part of the contract. Um, can make it look like a golf cart. Like a golf cart <laughs> we can make it look like a pickleball if that's what you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but well, I'll bring anyway. it up in a minute. Don't worry. <laughs> so. Um, no other real, real significant changes in in your uh, in your TCUD budget. Um, no real significant upticks there. Um, obviously, maintenance of, of, of our treatment plant and our low stations are paramount. Um, we do have a couple of uh, capital items in here. Uh, one we'll pay cash for. Uh, it's a UTV. It's like a utility gas-powered utility vehicle. 
I guess I got three and a half miles of force main along the Catawba River. Um, that doesn't have a lot of easy access, and they need to inspect those more frequently. Um, having to do it by foot, you can only drive it so far, and then you've got to walk it. Uh, it's not very efficient, but we do need to keep eyes on it, checking the air release valves and e exercising those things. So has us paying cash for that and then um, included in, the, in our financing package, and it'll have approximately a $4,000 uh, impact on the following fiscal year. Um, it just a, a couple of capital items. One is a uh, CCTV, uh, closed caption uh, television type uh, videoing uh, operation for our sewer lines instead of having to continually to contract that work out. Um, you've also got in there a, um, there was one lift station that w we weren't able to include a generator for with the FEMA grant. Uh, so it's adding that, that backup power generator for that, uh, as well as upgrades to some of the blowers at wastewater treatment plant too. So that's what your capital is looking, looking like. Um, as I've noted in your packet, you got about $250,000 in reserves, uh, for TCUD. We want to keep plugging away at that and adding to it. Um, if, I, I know some of y'all weren't weren't here, but years ago, um, Force Main under Hunter's Run uh, that ran to the county uh, blew, and that was an unexpected eighty-five thousand dollar expense. Um, it was yeah, and that was at a time where T-Cut was not performing very well. Um, we we definitely need those reserves in T-Cut, um, but we right now it's performing very well, and we don't want to jack the rates up just so we can build up that that reserve you know we just keep plugging away at it year by year um and we'll, we'll get to where we need to be so that is that is your uh t-cud budget um again just running back through some of the highlights to me the most um and apparently i got backwards with my numbers there it's supposed to say 2.1 to 1 not 1.2 to 1 that's to me is the most important is uh, being at that 2.1 to one ratio debt service coverage ratio. That is the most important thing at a utility utility budget every single year. Um, violating that violates the bond, bond covenants. Uh, we do not want for the, the, the bank to come to us and say, Hey, we're going to need that $14 million back right now. That's, that's not a pretty picture. As long as we're staying over that bond covenant, we're in good shape and uh, we've continued to do so. Um, again, slight increase on the capacity fees. That's paid by the builder developer. Um, those are not big uptick numbers there. Um, it does include the completion of the PER um, on the wastewater system and the rate study, is, as I just mentioned. Um, uh, one new hire and then your capital, as we talked about, paying cash for the, for the UTV, not financing that. Um, and then uh, the CCTV, the generator, um, and then you get blowers for the lift station would be the would be the remainder of that. And come this fall, we'll probably be bringing you a financing plan for the um, for the water tower, the new water tower. Um, the debt on that would be serviced by impact fees, so it wouldn't it wouldn't even be in your TCUD budget. It would be in that capital uh, project. What are we we impact fee budget. Huh? What are we going to paint that as? <laughs> That's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's better than a lift station. Well, <laughs> we we will give you options, certainly. <laughs> so, um, but that again, we'll be having those conversations probably September October time frame um, before you know we're we've got it out for bid now. Those bids will be coming back in in September. Um, and once we get the bids in, that's when we'll start the financing uh, Is that process. the Windhaven? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that how, how close is that to the intersection there? Right. It's set back. Half mile? Probably a half mile back going into the, going into the development away from Gold Hill. Isn't the school about the same place, a half mile or so back? Um, the it's school's closer, probably a mile, mile and a half, but it's back to the left. This will be back to the right Okay. as you, as you enter the development. The mm -hmm. 1.2 that you've got on there, does that include? Wasn't there a, a grant or a half a million dollar grant? It's it's yeah the the um, that that is what would be remaining after the half million dollar grant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> where where will where do we anticipate Windhaven being with their development when we start on this? We're we're in plan reviews right now, okay. so um, they they should be pushing dirt. Uh, Tom, when when are we anticipating yeah, when? So yeah, they'll, they'll be pushing dirt uh, this coming fiscal year. Yeah, later this fall, 
uh, they'll, they'll start on their infrastructure and everything. So we'll have to get the, the tower up and tied into the line. Well, we had um, houses and on that connected. still. Two, two something for the houses, 200? Uh, 185, 189, 185. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So everything's moving forward smoothly. That's a big yes. Yeah. Sure we um, and we've something. finally got, I actually got back from the school, um, I, the school's district's attorney this afternoon. They accepted our counter of uh, option two. Um, so we'll be putting that together, probably bringing it to you here pretty soon. Option two was we keep our $400,000, spend it how we want to in the park. They build their stuff, they main, yeah, and, it, and they're paying for the road, and they'll turn it over to us as a public road once they've built it, just like a normal developer would do. So, and they're um, maintaining the parks or will we're maintaining? We'll maintain the baseball field. Okay. Uh, the football stadium and everything is, is theirs. Uh, we'll maintain the, uh, the baseball field, uh, and, and we'll utilize that. Cool. Mm -hmm. So um, any other questions on TCUD? All right, moving on to stormwater. Where we are? Yep, stormwater, not one too far. That was a balanced budget if I've ever seen one right there. <laughs> it is easy to do. So your stormwater is $520,000 coming in. Um, all of that is um, stormwater revenue. Um, you've got some addition, obviously additional ERUs coming in, uh, some from home, some from commercial, uh, to make up that, that budget. Um, and again, it is a balanced budget. We do not put together a, a reserve or contingency fund on, on stormwater. The money that comes in, we put back into the system. Um, one positive note on stormwater is, um, we retired the bond debt that started that department, um, this year. So we have no more debt payments on, on, the, uh, on that bond. So uh, good news there. Um, you've got about 144 new homes and about 8,866 square feet of new commercial impervious surfaces, making up that revenue. Um, you've got about $147,000 uh, in drainage maintenance materials. Uh, those are stormwater projects getting done either by us or by contractors. Um, you can see here 52% of the funds that come in go back into the operation and maintenance, uh, and 48% are going into your personnel. Uh, so, and those that personnel is uh, your public work staff. So, 75% um, of the public work salaries are in general fund. 25% are of their salaries are in in stormwater for the, and it's just a basically a time allocation type thing uh, is how we we approximate those. So, um, so we don't have anybody set working in, in. Um Stormwater, I mean, it just it just comes out of Phil's personnel. No, it's uh, Tim and uh, public Tim's works guy. Yes, sir. So you don't you don't have a a uh, stormwater a employee. Person. That is correct. You don't have just a <clears throat> stormwater employee. We have our maintenance guys. All the brush collection that's funded out of and leaf collection that's all funded through stormwater fees. Um, and then those guys uh, also perform street maintenance, pipe replacement, outfall repairs, catch basin repairs. Um, Taking down trees, yeah, pretty much anything that needs needs to be done to keep the city looking good. So, um, you've got um, there. There are some projected um, uh, or envisioned um, um, capital items. Sorry, brain brain went dead there. Uh, new backhoe um, or an additional backhoe that helps with the brush collection and things of that nature, as well as a new dump truck to help continue to expedite that process as um, new streets are coming online. Again, those won't have a budgetary impact this year, but we'll have about a $40,000 impact the following year. Um, and you can see uh, we grew, um, we're projecting about a thirty to $35,000 um, um, increase in the budget this year, and that number will continue to climb um, as we move forward. We've also got some debt that after this coming fiscal year will be paid off on equipment as well, so that'll free up some additional revenues. Um, and that's your stormwater budget. Um, nothing nothing crazy in, the, in your expense, no big major upticks um, at all there. So any questions on stormwater? Is that also where that chipping facility that? That is correct. That's, that's operated out of your stormwater. That is, that is correct. Um, our wood chipping site off of Gardendale. Yes, sir. So again, your salaries and wages, again, that's only 25%. It reflects 25% of the public works uh, salaries and wages. You got over $140,000 in drainage maintenance uh, projects. Uh, your capital 
again, uh, is a new backhoe and dump truck uh, with those payments uh, being realized in the 1920 fiscal year. And as I stated at the beginning, the bond that created that department uh, some many years ago has been retired uh, as of this fiscal year. So that is stormwater. How much did that free up in terms of payments? About $25,000. Okay. Because the, the way the, the debt was structured, uh, those payments uh, tapered off significantly towards, towards the latter part of the year, or latter part of the, the debt cycle. Okay. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions on stormwater? All right. Beach and Swim Center. Joey, why don't you come on up? As you'll be part of this discussion here. This is probably the one area where we're, we are looking to make, quote unquote, potentially some significant changes. Um, we'll talk through those here in just a moment. So um, as you look at your packet, you see that we've gone from uh, 185,607 this year to a projected 164,849. Um, and it is a balanced budget. Um, memberships have been declining since uh, FY 14, 15. I mean, they've just been steadily just dropping off. Um, some of that is, yeah, there, a lot of folks, especially in Lakeshore, have been installing their own pools in their backyards. Uh, the Lakeshore folks are probably our biggest customers um, as far as membership packages at, at the Beach and Swim Center. Not the only ones, but they probably make up the greatest percentage. Um, what we're proposing here is uh, to decrease our membership rates back to what those 14, 15 numbers were. Uh, so it's about a 10% reduction on the rates, bringing those down. Um, hoping to attract folks to come back to us uh, and, and become members. Um, now, we've also uh, worked through the, um, through the pool schedule for the, for the year uh, to reduce some of our hours that were open where folks just primarily weren't using it or having the ability to use it because of school schedules and things like that. Um, we're getting very little usage and in some cases no usage at all. Uh, but if the pool is open, we're still, you know, the contractor's still got to pay the lifeguards and things like that. So um, we're adjusting the pool schedule. One of the things that helps us is the schools not getting out until after Memorial Day next year uh, instead of before Memorial Day. So we'll open all of Memorial Day and then after Memorial Day until school gets out, we've got a, a limited weekday schedule, correct? Um, so we'll begin Memorial Day instead of the first uh, full weekend in May, which had been the previous time. And then um, as school begins to let out that um, first, I believe it's the first full week in June, um, we'll start to scale in uh, weekday hours um, mm -hmm. with it going into our full our full schedule, um, the first I, week, I yeah. believe, starting that Thursday or mm -hmm. Friday when schools are on a half day. Right. So, um, and then instead of staying open until the week after Labor Day, basically um, staying open full schedule until uh, through Labor Day Monday and then being closed. Um, our, our usage down there drops off significantly. You got extracurricular activities, sports, things like that, plus school going on. We just have very little, very, very little usage. Um, the other thing that we were, uh, we're tweaking is uh, on our weekday hours, Monday through Thursday, closing at 7 instead of closing at 8, Friday, Saturday, staying open until 8. Um, just, you just don't have people that are down there swimming between 7 and 8. Saving some of those hours actually reduced the pool contract by about ten to $15,000, wasn't it? it? If, I think we're at 52 this year, and uh, the new proposal is 40000 That is 40000 change. Hold on. It's, yeah, it's 40 and some change this year. It's either 52 or 54. Yeah, you're going from 51,448 to yeah. 40,262 just by changing that. So with the savings on the pool contract, plus we think we're going to bring in some additional members. The one thing that I do like is this, um, this budget does include an operational contingency of 22,427. That might be the best operational contingency that the pool facility has had in 10 years. Um, it allows us to replace old uh, pool furniture, things like that, trying to create a better experience for the members. Um, biggest thing that will sell that place is word of mouth. People are having a bad experience. They're going to tell their friends they're not coming back. People are having a great experience. We'll, we'll, we should be able to attract more members. The other thing we changed on the fee schedule uh, was just the elimination of the non-resident fee. Um, it's not a tax-supported facility. Um, we get 10... 12 non-resident membership packages right now? I would say on a right year, 20. Okay. Um, we don't have a large audience for that. Um, all the new neighborhoods that are going in already have neighborhood pools. 
you're pretty much picking up Palmetto and Palmetto West, you know, those folks. And, you know, they come in, oh, you got to pay an additional $200 just because you don't live in the city. Yep, see ya. <laughs> they're going to Carowinds. They're not, they're not going to come join us. So when you look at, at, at the proposed fee schedule here, um, basically you're on a, if you were to break it down on a monthly basis, uh, we charge some folks less than what it costs to join a uh, family at, at the Y. Um, you know, so, and we're trying to provide that country club type atmosphere, um, yeah, at the pool. Um, you know, so uh, I am pleased that it has been tax neutral uh, since the day the developer gave it to us. We have not had to put any tax dollars into it. Um, we are constantly looking at and evaluating what we're doing down there to keep it that way. So that's what this budget reflects. Questions on Beach Club. So we're not going to be opening, going back to the pool hour, so we won't be opening the pool until after Memorial Day? We'll open it Memorial, Memorial Day, Day weekend. weekend. Memorial Day weekend. Your yes. swim team will be in there prior to that. Yeah. yeah. Which, which is a blessing as well because you have less overlap of members in the swim team as well, which is always a challenge. So I know one thing that I always struggle with with pools. I, I grew up in the north, right? So mm -hmm. being down here and having nice weather pretty much year-round is amazing. And so to me, it's, it's like pools should be open even longer um, throughout the season versus less. Um, but that being said, in understanding, you know, trying to balance the budget, are there opportunities or is there any potential to have um, the pool be open at like swim at your at your own risk type scenarios, things like that? From a from a DHEC standpoint, that pool is is not required to have lifeguards. From a city standpoint, I would never have those gates unlocked unless there were lifeguards down there because that is not a lawsuit we want to tackle. In, in a lot of our th thought process beh behind shifting the numbers or the, the hours, the way that we did was just looking at usage. And if you get a warm weekend in May, yeah, that changes things, but sometimes you don't have that. It's basically based on weather. And the reduction from the Labor Day is just when kids go back to school, you're starting recreation activities, it's just not being used. It, it's difficult for our uh, pool management company to honestly staff it because a lot of their staff is your high school workers, your college students. So you're getting lesser quality of, of workers as well. So it, it, it addresses a few issues that we've run into in the past by, by reducing the hours the way that we have. And again, these are slight reductions. I mean, basically, you're talking about three weekends that we were typically open in May. We won't be open. And those are and weekends. One weekend. not, we would have one, one week in May where it was 12 to 5. The rest right. were just Saturday, Sunday hours. So mm -hmm. you're, big picture, you're talking about four or five weekends and, um, and like two weeks um, on a, a condensed schedule. So impact's not that huge when you look at it big picture-wise. And so if you, if you calculate out like the past couple summers and the amount of weeks that they got per like the fee, right? So say that there were 12 weeks in the summer and they paid, you know, let's just say $1,200 to make it easy. That'd be $100 a, uh, a week, right? And so now that you're, you're shortening that period of time, I know you're reducing the fee, but is it, is it actually more? If you think off the top of your head, the pool's approximately open – um, you know, from, from May until September, so you have June, July, August are full months for us. You're, you're talking about approximately 15, 15 days that's impacted over the entire course of a almost five-month season, four-month season. So, um, you know, not doing the math off the top of my head, I think the reduction of rates are somewhat reflective to that. Um, we've also reduced the the um, late fee as well to sign up because a lot of the things that we'd experience is, um, you know, coming in after the early bird rate, I'm coming in to sign up for a pool membership in June. And, oh, my gosh, I have to pay $100 more by – and, you know, I'm using the pool less. So it's tough to justify that sell to people. So we're we're providing opportunities to kind of justify the decrease in the rate or the decrease in the pool hours along with the rate. Yeah, yeah I, and, and Alicia, really to go back to what you're talking, what you were referring to, 
Yes, it, I think it's very commensurate. And actually, I think they're getting a bigger discount. I mean, considering what the usage has been, even though those hours were available, folks just weren't using it. But yet we were still paying to keep it open. Uh, it just doesn't make sense. Um, but if you look at where our predominantly where, where that's being used, you know, where, where the facility is being used, yeah, we, we've kept those numbers intact uh, to where you know, they're, they're still getting, I would say, the majority of our members are going to get the exact same experience they had this summer Correct. for less money is what you're going to be looking at from a usage standpoint. Okay. Thank you. Thanks yep. for um, so as somebody who pretty much lives at the pool in the summer, I would agree with all everything that you just said. Um, I would reduce the, the number of weekends both in May and September. Um, the pool's freezing in May anyway. Nobody's getting in that pool unless they're on the swim team. Um, you, I, we, I think we had talked about the potential to prorate a, a fee if they're, say somebody moves into the area in July or something like that. We've always done that. Okay. If, if, yeah. you, if you move in July, we're not going to make you pay the, uh, the full post early bird rate. Okay. What was the start time? Because I know you guys were going back and forth about we, that. We had all... Oh, uh, uh, for, the, for the pool schedule? Yeah. 11. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing I wanted to ask is on the, on the fee schedule that I'm looking at, did you guys reduce the amount of guest passes for next year? Okay. Is it always only been four? Oh, maybe they just like... Yeah, let me like slide. the free ones that you get? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was just thinking there's a nice little pad up there. It could be the beach and swim and pickleball club. There you go. That's some additional revenue, a little membership. Down there by, you talking on. about down there by the uh, volleyball court? No, up top. Down by the lake? Oh, the, on the gravel, gravel lot? lot? The parking lot? They yeah. need the we need the gravel lot with swim team. Uh, <laughs> it's slammed. Yep. Um, now, if you want to send swim team over to Lake Ridge's pool, then we can load it up pickleball courts over there. <laughs> uh, but no, that, that parking lot, yeah, from May till the end of June gets used a lot. Outside of that, it, yeah, it, it is a very open spot that has wasted space. It really is, no doubt. Anything else, Beach Club? Um, so again, back to, the, uh, back to your slides. 68% of your funds coming in are going into uh, back in operation uh, maintenance. 18% is personnel, 14% contingency. Um, as we just discussed, reduction in rates, pulling it back to the FY1415 rates on the membership packages, eliminating the non-resident rate, and it's just a, a rate. Uh, whoever wants to join, uh, you've seen in the, in the packet um, the, the various membership packages that are offered. We did reduce down the salary allocations. Uh, this is your parks and rec staff. Uh, just based on the, the number, of the, the amount of time they spend on Beach and Swim Center versus their other parks and rec duties, um, just that's something we analyze every year. So you, see a, you will see a reduction there uh, on your, on your um, just on the salaries and wages, and that's why those are reflected in your parks and rec budget because that's where they are spending the vast majority of their time. Um, we obviously just ch uh, discussed the change in the pool schedule, which did reduce the contract amount. Um, and then we'll be adding some, you know, adding new furniture. It's replacing old furniture, uh, the pool furniture around there, and then adding some, uh, some additional shade structures. Again, that's just coming from feedback from our memberships. And $22,000 in your operational contingency. And that is your Beach Club budget. Any questions? None. Cool. Two to go, your events tourism budget, $129,694 projected in, in that for, uh, for the coming fiscal year. Um, let's jump straight to there because that's what folks want to know about. What, what are we doing? Um, you can see July 4th and, and our concerts, that's the things that people love. Those, those are our big events uh, through the year. Um, they're take, they operate on or are using the majority of, the, of those funds. July 4th, um, actually a small uptick on the, on the funding for that. Uh, concerts, 
um, about a twelve thousand dollar uptick on on concerts um, and, and funding those. Uh, mainly because we now have to provide the sound for the bands. Uh, and the bands just aren't as cheap as they used to be. But uh, again, those are important events to the community, uh, continuing to fund those. Your Mayor's Cup, uh, the, that's just the expense side of that um, that comes through the, um, uh, through the fees uh, the, for the participants of the, of the Mayor's Cup tournament. Fall Festival, 13%, and we did increase the funding uh, for that um, slightly. Um, and then you've got your holiday lighting, uh, your senior games, and then your holiday festival coming in at 1%. Um, so um, that's your events budget. Um, any questions there? All right, and then last is your H tax budget, showing a um, modest increase of about $24,000 between this year and next year um, on H tax. And the way this year's trending, we may be scoring that low. Um, that, that number next year very well could be 270, uh, 275, based on the way things are trending right now. Um, that is, this is a budget that has continued to grow, which is, which is fantastic. Um, we shifted the event salaries out of this budget and into the actual events budget. Um, it is allowable under state law to fund those things from H tax. So you've got a tra you also have a transfer from H tax to that events tourism budget to help fund those uh, events and things like that uh, of ninety seven thousand four sixty eight uh, repairs um, uh, and maintenance to clubhouse uh, facility um, Glennon Center uh, exterior stuff at the clubhouse um, one hundred sixteen thousand dollars same as we we funded this year. Um, I think they should be about done if they haven't finished already. The uh, replacing all the windows in the bar and the restaurant, replace the door going out onto the deck. Um, next year, we see those funds really starting to get into the uh, the Glennon Center, um, upgrading the sound system uh, to make it a lot more attractive. Um, the York County Convention Visitors Bureau went through, had lunch. Went through, looked at everything, and made suggestions. This is, these are the things. If you're able to do these, will help us market that f facility for us more, uh, drive more revenue into there. So, um, your Rundy Park lights. That's just the uh, the 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 uh, loan price, twenty four thousand dollars and change on that, um, and capital reserves, eighty nine hundred bucks, and we do, we are proposing. Um, if y'all recall, uh, the Convention Visitors Bureau came in and asked for 10%. We are showing an $8,000 uh, payment to them. That represents about 3%. Um, they, they will market our events, market our facilities. I think it's a step in the right direction. It's not overwhelming, um, not a huge impact to the budget. Let's we'll see what they do with it. Let's see what kind of impact they bring back from it. If they, if they bring back nothing, okay, we don't fund it again. Right. Yeah, but um, they're going to put that not into salaries. They're putting it in, into marketing. Um, they've got the Glennon Center as one of their top two places that they're pushing for folks to go to. It's that one, and it's here in the Marriott yeah. down in Kingsley are the two, top two places they are pushing folks uh, coming in for conventions, big gatherings, meetings, things like that. How are they going to show us an ROI for our investment? Um, I have talked with uh, Billy Williams on that, and or excuse me, Billy Dunlop on that, and he is putting together what their plan would be for this eight thousand dollars, and we'll bring that, and we will have them come back in and show here's 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 what we've brought in for golf, here's what we brought in for the Glennon Center, and things like that that has been directly through them, uh, and he is more than happy to do that. He said he can do it once a quarter, twice a year, whatever we need. And I said, let's let, let's start with what we'll give you till summer, and and come in, and then we'll we'll see from there. So. That is your H tax budget. Are there any questions? Um, and there's there's just kind of your breakdown. Uh, Forty-four percent uh, is in maintenance and repairs. Uh, state law allows you to spend up to fifty percent on maintenance repair um, of tourist related facilities, which obviously the golf course is. You got nine percent on your Rundy Park lights. You've got thirty-seven percent on your transfer to events. 4% on marketing, that's website hosting, uh, our street banners, um, you know, street little banners. prizes, things like that, um, uh, our giveaways that, that we can do, you know, cups with our logo on it, things like that. Um, again, modest operational contingency there at 3%. Um, if not used, it just goes into that H tax reserve fund, um, which is getting healthy, which is good, because those dollars can go towards Catawba Park. 
um, once we start to break ground on it. So for $8,000, um, they're going to market the Glennon Center? They're, they're, they are n not going to put as robust of a plan together as they would if we had provided them 10%. Okay. But they will scale it back proportionally. But that, yes, they are. So let's say they get center. a convention or two or three in there mm -hmm. or whatever. Who gets that money? That goes to our licensee, right? Yes, sir. Well, why didn't the licensee Which, pay the eight thousand dollars? Well, that's not the only thing that they're marketing. that they're marketing. They're, they're marketing right, our events. You said, I said, and, and well, they're like marketing that. the Glennon Center. And you said yes. I said. Well, the, yeah, they are marketing the Glennon Center, but that's not the only thing okay. they're what else marketing. Are they marketing? Uh, all of our events. Uh, they're marketing our the golf free, course. The free. Uh, Yep, <laughs> our concerts, our Fourth of July, concerts? sure. Yeah. We pay um, yeah. And as the as our license, how are we making money off this eight thousand dollars? How are we making money off eight thousand? Um, well, the, the, into the, city, the more money that the more money your operator makes, the um, the more money we will make. He has to pay a business license fee to us. He has to pay hospitality tax to us. Well, he's I mean, more he's than eight thousand dollars. That well, remains he's, to be he's seen. Paying the like, he's paying the license fee anyway. I mean. Yeah, make. but it's based off of his gross revenue. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we don't pay the eight thousand dollars, do they not market our? Place? They're not going to push it as hard. I'm not going to say that they're not going to do it at all. Um, yeah, I mean I, they're still going to have the Glennon Center on there. Um, they they can't really afford not to have the Glennon Center on there because of the Baxter Hood sh Center shutting down. But if y'all don't want to fund the eight thousand dollars, it it'll go to Capital Reserve and we can move on. Well, just one thought. I mean, our marketing is 4% already. If we're going to give them 3%, what if we beefed up our own marketing contributions and marketed what we want to market ourselves? I don't know that we have the resources or the wheelhouse um, to tackle it. I mean, you're talking about a, a department that's probably got 20 to 25 people versus a department of one plus me and Katie. Um, I, I don't think you're going to – you're not going to get the same bang for the buck Look at that one, though. <laughs> so what do we get? What do we get in return from that's from Lacey, huh? What do we... I think she's already that, paid for her salary. Oh, that's true. She's the our new uh, actress. I, I just give me some direction. Do you do you want? Think, is there is is there an opportunity where he could you could ask one of those guys to say, hey, we're not necessarily skeptical, but could you show up with a plan to? Yep. To, to give us. The hows and whys and and how is it measurable? You know, yeah, obviously how's it's it measurable, measurable in mm -hmm. eight tax. What are we going to get back for? That's um, what we what we can do is is leave the budget as as it exists with that and not to spend those those dollars until council has that that plan and council is on board with that plan and then we will do an agreement with them. I mean, I, can I, we get them I, here for August twentieth? You can, but I mean, all your all this stuff's going to already be put together. I mean, we've got to advertise that we have to advertise this by Friday. Right. No, like I know. This Friday. So, but uh, yeah, I can probably have, uh, I feel quite certain he'd be here August An email's fine. I mean, just, everything. but I'm fine, fine with an email. Huh? Just forward this his email, mm -hmm. what he's, what we're getting. Sure. For the money. I and I apologize. I thought this was something that everybody was on board with doing after the presentation and I'm not trying to force it. We've never given them any money. Um, I, based on their past directors, I wouldn't give them money. I, Absolutely not. Um, they are headed in a good direction, but this isn't something council wants to do. That is absolutely fine. It, it may have been the gentleman that pitched us, but <clears throat> I wasn't in favor when he came and pitched us last time. Now maybe he That's, wasn't prepared. He wasn't. It was. It was a very last minute because the director got pulled into a budget no, meeting with the county. I, I, yep. I certainly didn't like the answer that he gave me. So, are you saying, Charlie, that you do recommend it, or you don't? <clears throat> I don't have a recommendation. I think we will get a lot of bang for the buck for the $8,000, but I have no heartburn if we want to put that into our own marketing. What bang do you think we'll get? That's the question that we can answer. I, I can't answer yeah, that question for you. That's the question you. we want. That's, they, they are based on the leadership that they now have in place with Billy Dunlap and knowing what his track record was in Lawrence um, before he came up here. Um, that's that's where my confidence in it comes from, is the leadership that they now have in place. Um, but at the end of the day, they're still going to do, they're still going to market York County. They're still going to market us to a certain extent. Um, they're not going to dedicate probably as much time as they would. Um, but if again, we can put that into our own stuff. Um, yeah, maybe for I mean, 
I mean, like, what's I'm their, fine either way. I don't, I don't like care. The, for lack of better words, what's their business plan for TAK? I guess what's their. That's what we need to see. Yeah. That's that's what just, I will get from him and get it to. Yeah. Okay. Okay with yeah. He doesn't have to come in and speak to us. I will tell him. I will okay. email him first thing in the morning and All get right. that for you. Is that okay with y'all? Yes. Email? Okay. And that's H tax. Any other questions on it? Those are the budgets, Council. I have nothing further you at the, further for you at this time. Okay. Thanks. Thanks everybody for coming and looking real pretty in the audience. That's super exciting. Yep. Mm -hmm. really like, do we have public Larry. comments? Hold public on. Comments. We have public comments. Come on, public comments, please. <laughs> I still have a couple of questions too. Way to represent. Uh, please, please. Come you got to get up to the microphone. We got to be able to hear you. Just sit at the table. That's fine. Just sit at the table. You're good. Either one. Either one. Uh, as far as the uh, uh, the upcoming trash and and recycle fee, is that lifeline as long as the lifeline as the debt service for the police station, or once the debt service for the police station is over with, does that just continue as to just one of those kind of thing line items that's just going to stick there? It would be my recommendation that. It, that it stay because it's not tied specifically to the debt on the police station. It is it is to it is to free up tax dollars so that they can go towards other things. So in the initial years, yeah, it's helping uh, satisfy that those debt payments on the police station. In future years, it could go towards more robust street maintenance. It could go towards free up tax dollars. It could go towards Catawba Park or any other a sundry of, of of projects or fire station or fire stations or things like that. Whatever. Yep. Pay off the debt. One, any other public questions? Any other public comments? <laughs> okay, I have a question. Okay, he's got a great question. We uh, we discussed at the last meeting. We discussed pickleball and tennis, and I think Ryan the girl said yeah, he can. Y'all wanted to wait till the budget meeting to discuss it. Is right that what y'all said? David. So, yeah. I'd like to. So what we what's your what do you want to do about pickleball and tennis? I made a motion last time. You guys weren't. Do we have a crazy. plan? That was the. Well, y'all are against the plan. <laughs> no, I, I have not had time. To okay. So now you want to now you want to plan. That's what that's what the motion was and what was voted on. Well, I know you guys were against the motion though, to, for a plan. Now you want a plan? It's it, it's neither here nor there. You, there's three to two. You guys voted for a plan. So when there's a plan, then we can talk about it. Right? Had we not had we not made a motion for a plan, how are we going to get to the pickleball tennis part? What was our what's our avenue to get there? We have one hundred and ninety thousand dollars to. That's what's to, going in this year to That's pay for whatever as we see. But fit. we also have other money in there too. That's not. I mean, we're at twenty nine percent of the contingency money. Give her twenty seven to twenty nine percent. So there's another four hundred thousand dollars or so in there. You want to pull money from reserves? To no, no, no. It. We're at the reserves. You guys just said you want to keep it twenty five percent. The other, we're That's at 27, 28. That's so, how the ordinance is written. Right. So right. we've got more than that in there. So you wanted to pull that money out and put it in the, uh, in the capital fund. So we've got 190 plus. What's, a, what's 4% more than 25? The 2.5 million. Another 80,000? Potentially. I guess it depends on how. So we've got about 250,000 that, that we can fiddle with. I, I guess another thought too is do we want to wait and allow that to figure out what what the reserves are what the where we come in at the end of this fiscal year evaluate it then to find out how much do we have at that point and what are we comfortable with spending and I think that an, an overall conversation is are we comfortable comfortable always sticking at that 25 percent or do we want to make it you know, and it doesn't have to be a, a policy per se, but do we want to say that we want our capital reserves, or sorry, not our capital reserves, but just our reserves in general to be at 30%, and then anything over 30% goes towards that capital reserve fund. I thought you just said earlier that over 25% you wanted to move into the capital funds. I thought you just said that no, about... No, 25% was my question. That's what is the policy, right? That's so what's So anything by over code. that could potentially be, right, could potentially go. So do we want to do it that way or do we want to do it another way and um, it's just a pro just throwing an idea out for us to discuss um and have a conversation about 
You are to the good by about $450,000 over your 25%. So we have almost seven, well, no, $600,000, give or take. So, well, according to the policy now or how things currently work, that $450,000 would go into the reserves. Is that right? It's no, 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 no. That's how much you've got in reserves that are over your 25%. Okay. Now, okay. At, at the end of the day, I mean, pickleball seems like a great, great time from what I've seen. Croquet looks like it's a great time. Um, we've also heard that uh, the bathrooms at Rundy, Pitt, Karen, and Windjammer are disgusting. They need to be torn down and rebuilt. Uh, I've heard time and time again from folks like Scott Million that a sidewalk needs to be put down Rundy Park. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I need to know what, what council's priorities are. Um, yeah, I mean, as you heard uh, the gentleman from Croquet say at your last meeting, I asked first. No, he didn't. I don't think that's how it, things should right. be funded. I agree. Um, oh, yeah, okay. just yeah. First, just I mean, because you show up with no. twenty people in the audience in red shirts and you ask for it three hundred times, like that doesn't mean you know. I I agree. Pickleball is fun. Like yes, we want to put money towards recreation, but it doesn't. You know, we have to have a strategy behind it. We have to have a long term. We have to have long term goals. We can't just. Well, here throw was my strategy. I mean, I've been doing this for a while. We we trying to figure out a way to add revenue, you know, to do stuff like that. And ever since I became mayor, I've been trying to, I've been out there beating the bushes, trying to find more revenue. And I went out, and when I went to the mayor's conference, was that in February, March, or I, I asked all the mayors, what do you guys do for extra revenues? What do you think about impact fees? And to attain, everybody said, I wish we could do impact fees. Our, our cities are getting smaller. They're not getting bigger. I mean, I talked to um, Union and Chester. They're, they're losing people. Mm -hmm. And then I went to RFATS and I was, got with Michael Johnson. I said, Michael Johnson, what, how, how can we get more revenue here? And he suggested, why don't you piggyback on you know, the impact fee that study that the school board's doing? And I said, that's great. I ran to you when? March? I ran to you immediately. I don't think I waited five minutes. I said, let's go ahead and piggyback with uh, the school board about impact fees. And he said, great idea. So we did that, and now here we are with the impact fees coming up. If we do the whole 6,600 for residents, what's that times? We got 1,500 houses that are that are allotted, but that are already you know permitted to do, but haven't got the permit. What's 6,600 times 1,500 houses? We thought you'd have the answer already. 9.9 .9 million. So there's 10 million dollars that I got in here all of a sudden. Can you give a brother a break? Can I get five? Can I get a five percent finding fee for that finder's fee? You know, is that, can I get five percent finder's fee to build a pickleball court? I don't want it for my own wallet. I'm trying to do it for TK. We're a recreational city. You drive into TK, it says TK, a recreational city. I, I agree with you. I made that. Exact well, can I get a five percent funding fee then? I'm out that. That's because that's money that's going to come in. They are going to build those houses. We can't stop them. And if, if we could stop them, I might even consider stopping it. But we can't stop them. There's 1,500 times 6,600. That's 9,900,000. 9, right. There's some extra revenue coming in. I, I can't get two or 300,000 from that? I, I don't think anyone's saying no. I think we're just saying, let's, talk, let's have a discussion about it. We so, were going to have a discussion last time. And we said, no, let's wait till this time. Now we're here, and we don't want to do it now. We're going to go to the next workshop. time. We have a better idea of what's going on in terms of our, our financial stability. We have an opportunity to explore those options, and we can have more of a conversation versus it just showing up on the agenda and us not having that ability to 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 know or to understand well, where when, we when are. Why don't we put a limit on it? Are. Say we're going to do it up to this limit. Well, I think we need to find out what what are all the capital needs throughout the city. Like Charlie just mentioned, we've got bathrooms that need to be replaced that people use all the time now. If we can't keep up with our current facilities we've got 9.9 .9 million dollars coming for that that are allocated coming. for certain things right but that's money that we're not spending that right. night so that's a different pot of money now instead of tk paying that 9.9 .9 million we got the impact fee paying that 9.9 .9 million and all of a sudden we've got 9.9 .9 million dollars in the other it's just a it's just a different color of money it's the same thing well so we've got 9.9 .9 million dollars coming in with the next three years four years Keep in mind, not all of that can go to Parks and Rec. Right. I know, but I'm saying that's not what yeah. we're paying for that kind of stuff, that we would have been paying for that. Mm -hmm. So at, at this point, it, I don't have no idea what these pickleball courts are going to cost. We're, we are working on that, but we don't have those, those dollars yet. So 
I don't know if it's a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand, but, but we are we are working on it so we can bring that back to I you. I think that might be high, but let's say it's two hundred thousand. Is that outrageous for you guys to pay two hundred thousand dollars for a pickleball court? Not if it's part of the strategy, but we've been promising Catawba Park for ten years and haven't even don't even have it. We're not even close. You right, know? we aren't so, even close. But it's just two hundred thousand that we've got now. We've got money coming in for Catawba Park that we didn't have. I wish you guys would have went out there and beat the bushes, but I did that. Okay, I got it, and I'm just asking for a five percent fee. Like I said, help a brother out. Five percent is what of, of ten million is what five hundred thousand. I could do it. You know, half this year, half next year. It's gonna be 250 this year and 250 next year. I can build the, I can build a croquet court next year. That's fine. I'm not asking to do everything right one time. When are we updating the capital improvements list? Is that part of the comp plan? Yes, it'll okay. be part. It'll be done uh, through 2019. Yes. Okay, and that is, I know it's in the next fiscal year, but approximately when? Probably spring, summer of okay. 2019. And how much of that capital investment plan is funded? I don't have that answer for you sitting right here today. Do you have a, what would you guess? I'm not even going to venture a guess. <laughs> no. Um, but I can, I can provide you that information probably by the first of the week. So we've had a capital investment plan for almost five years, four years. About two years. Mm -mm. How, how long? Probably two years. Uh, okay, so two years. Two years. And mm -hmm. we don't know what's been funded. We don't know what, what has been funded. I mean, we do. I just don't have that information right here in front of me. And it's not something that I looked at within the last two or three days. So okay. I, I would have to come back to you on that. Okay. So I, I guess that the, the point is I think that we just need to have some conversation, which which this is the forum to do it in. So what is it that we want to, to do? What are those things that we know exist that need to be done? Mm -hmm. What are some new things that we want to do that will support our vision for the city? And how do we then allocate those or prioritize, prioritize those and then allocate the funding that we know we have? I think it's just a conversation that needs to, to happen before we go ahead and send, if, from my opinion, before we went ahead and sent staff off to figure out all the details and go down that rabbit hole when I didn't even have a, a good sense of what the next year's um, budget was going to be and what the recommendation was going to be from the city manager. So, but now you now know we've got four hundred thousand so of so dollars. Yeah, we've got so, another revenue stream coming in shortly of another ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. And can I just get? Can't we just agree to do two hundred thousand dollars or so? Is that what it costs? Part? I'm sure it won't be over that. Okay, where are you going to put it? Well, we we've, we've already discussed that. We I think we're going to put it up there underneath the water tower. The new water tower. No, this the water tower. The golf ball water tower. The golf tee water tower. Is that what's going to be painted as? The one where golf the tennis ball. courts the are cl now. The clubhouse. I have no problem with any of that. I want to see it laid out and then make a decision. That's what we passed a little motion right. last week. You guys are going to do that, right? right. That was we, not we a... Are, we, we are working on that. Yes, that sir. is not what we think we want that. That means we passed it. It as an, was an ordinance. It was a motion. Yeah. We, we mm -hmm. agreed to it. And so that's your work. That was your marching orders to get it done, right? That's correct. That is what we were working on. What I would like to see is an itemized list of what our capital needs are throughout the city. Then on top of mm -hmm. that, what are some of these requests that have come in that we've discussed or started to evaluate? And how much are we projecting that we would need to either allocate for them or how much do we know that they're going to cost? And then council can take a look at that full list and say, here's what already exists that needs to be funded, and here are some other things. Now, how are we going to move things around to prioritize? What's our priority? Is it recreation? Great, then let's take something that's, that's new to the list and let's make it number one. And let's, we've got $400,000, that one cost 100, boom. Okay, now we've got $300,000 left. What's next on the list? What's our next priority? Okay, it's, it's you know replacing the bathrooms at Rundy Park. Great, $30,000, okay, what's next? And, and start going down that list. But I think that if we just start pulling in random things without looking at the full picture, and not, not to say that it's random necessarily, but I think we need the full picture in front of us in order to, to make a, a, an informed decision. And, and I know that it seems like, oh, we've got all this money out there, but if, if that's the case, then why are we now charging a, 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 a trash fee? You know, Why are other things increasing? So I just don't think that that perception looks good either. So I think putting, being more thoughtful, having this conversation about what are those things, what are those items, how much they cost, and how much do we want to allocate. 
So do we want to spend the whole $190,000 that's being transferred to capital reserve? We might want to hold on to some of that because we know that there's things coming next year too that we're going to want to have saved up some money there to fund. So that's, that's the, that's okay. where I'm How long at. will it take you to get the, what do you call it, the priority of needs or what would you call it, the? Capital uh, improvement project. Capital. Just, yeah, just we already got the capital already improvement one. project. We've got yeah. that. We, we have that. We're, we're going off. We're going off of that. We're trying to add. We're trying to add to it. Yeah. So okay. So can we get an itemized list of what currently exists in our capital plan that we don't have funded? That's on the internet, isn't it? Can she download it's, that off the internet? Yes, it is on the internet. But can we get an itemized list and then also include on there some of the other things that we know of that have come up? Are you wanting a list of just capital projects or capital needs? I mean, because included in our capital improvements plan are equipment um, and things like that. It's not necessarily just projects, if that makes sense. It's not just facilities, yeah, or, or that type thing. So, I mean, what what list are you budget. are you looking for? I mean, I th I think I'm open to. Yeah, I mean, if if we if there's a certain major investment that we need to make, I mean, I think that we need to see it. I, think I don't know that it's it. fair to ask staff to set your the, the priorities right. we no, can no, bring no, you no, the no, list no, no, no. they don't have to set the priorities i think that's but a conversation we, we can has. we can absolutely bring you a list uh, by the september council meeting um, without a problem of here are the projects that we know of right now or at least the requests that have come in um you know whatever those may be um you know, some of which um i think are going to be very difficult to take on just because of lack of space. Um, yeah, but whether it's something that yeah, has been requested or something that staff has identified, yes, we can we can pull that together. Um, a, a fairly comprehensive list with uh, some proposed preliminary type, at least budgeting discussion numbers yeah. attached to those. And you tell us what order you want to do, man. And that's that's what we'll do. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, we can absolutely do that. So when I passed, we passed the motion last week, what was your perception that that meant? To bring back to y'all a proposal on what it would cost to build pickleball courts and where they could potentially be located, which we are working on. Okay, and what, that, that what's the timeline do you think that is? I'm hoping by your August meeting, um, but again, we're, like we're relying on folks out. Yes, sir. I'm relying on folks from, you know, contractors, vendors that are not under my control. Um, hopefully, I'll have it ready for your discussion on August 20th. If not, you will absolutely have it on your September meeting. All right. Well, I plan on making a motion at that time to funding it so you guys can plan on that. You can vote it down if you want. That's your prerogative. But I'd like to get this thing started. I'd like to move on with it and get this thing done by spring at least. So but you can vote it... no if you want. That's fine. No, I, I know I can vote no if I want. Yeah. But... <laughs> So are we saying then to the community that this is more important than funding towards Catawba Park or funding the bathrooms if we go ahead and make this motion? Well, Alicia, we're, whatever you bring up is something that's important to you. You can bring up. I mean, that's fine. I brought well, I'm up just that, trying to have that conversation. That's what we're having. Um, but I just brought up that pickleball is important to me, and I brought it up. If so do we think it's, do you, do you think it's a top priority? Yes. The, the most important thing yes. is pickleball. For, for the money. I wish I had $15 million to do Catawba Park. It would be my number one priority. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get that now with the impact fees. We're going to get, we're going to get, before, I didn't think without impact fees, we wouldn't have Catawba Park when I leave as mayor in three and a half years. It wouldn't be there. I don't have any rose-colored glasses. I think we got funding to do that. But now with... Impact fees coming up, we're going to have some money to at least finish at least phase one, maybe even get into phase two. And if we can get game on pushed up now, we may even get it done by the time I'm, I'm leaving or at least have a great plan in three and a half years. But before, nope, wasn't going to happen. But with the money that it costs to do a pickleball court because of how much it costs, that's my number one goal right now because it's not a million dollars. What about the $30,000 that it would take to replace bathrooms that run That's apart? fine, too. Bring it up. If that's your most important thing. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, I, th I think collectively. I'm sure everybody's got some important stuff. Bring it up. Put it on the list. Let's talk about it. But don't say, well, I've got other plans now that you mentioned. Pat, Pat, pickleball, bring it up on your own. Bring it up whatever you like. I'm just, I'm just saying that 
without knowing what all those are, <clears throat> I can't choose pickleball over something else. Well, the reason I, I know it, know if I necessarily know the reason what I know all what it is, are and how much each of those things cost. But the reason I know what and, it's, and it's I important know where, I is because know people come stands. up here and ask. They haven't come up here and ask for bathrooms. That they come up. And, and I don't know where people stand from from a strategic vision standpoint. I mean, recreation community is that. Is that real? Is that our focus? Is yeah. that where we want to go? Yeah, it says so on the sign. I, I, I know it says so on the sign, but is that what we we want to continue to be? And, and I'm do we want to continue at, to be a recreation of, city? I'm looking at all of council, not just the mayor. I'm looking at all of council. Um, what is our what is our vision for the city, and how do we make sure the decisions that we make are supportive of that vision? Um, and and. That's the conversation I want to have. Then you should bring it up at every available opportunity. There we go. And we will discuss it. But yes, I would think a priority for me is a recreational city, what says on the sign. If it's not a priority, let's take it off and call it something else. Are we, what, are we going to be a recycle city? Let's take it down and say we're a recycle city. Or if we're whatever we're going to be. Are we a bird watching city? Let's take that down and say bird watching city. Whatever else, but we're a recreational city. We have been ever since the inception of TUK. I would like to continue that. Anybody else have any ideas? Nope. Okay, then let's make a motion to go in executive session. Do I have a second? second. No seconds. Let's, oh, we do have a second. Okay, I was going to. Either one. Uh, all in favor of going to executive session, say aye. 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 All opposed? It's unanimous.